Florida Citizen article to this effect in the, in the Mariner, this, in this Mariner, about the Trish, Trish Committee. Yeah, yeah, it's in today, today's Mariner, I think. I think that's in today's Mariner. I'm sorry, about what? About the facility, they're putting oh, together a facility. Yeah, the um, advisory committee, I saw that. Hmm. Very briefly, when I just, I usually open the, the paper you can usually read in about 10 minutes, not even that, five minutes. Just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> See if there's really anything it jumping out. long enough because I do the crossword puzzle, so it's well, probably 35 minutes. I'm saying if you're just scanning, though, for something like, you know, fire in situ or whatever, it's something big news, but I did see that. So we're waiting for two more members. Should we make any phone calls or anything? Or? Is it for um, that's the committee. Oh, this is the sure. advisory committee for the facilities? They're yeah. looking for people for the committee. Yeah, and I guess you guys looking get for boards to recommend somebody. somebody. I was thinking of the guy that just walked in today. Yeah. Good. Bob? Not that I want to influence your, your decision. But. Robert, how are you? Okay. Probably the, uh, the best qualified, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I can get rid of the piece of paper that says something about should, shake um, or beige. So before he knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have Steve. He he's too good a tennis player. You know Steve? Yeah. <laughs> to, my, to my to my what detriment? No, that's not quite quite the word. So what was the story you were telling me about 123? Oh, well, you mean I don't know if I was telling you any story about 123. I got that email blast. It yeah. was closed today. For a while, what happened? No, well, so I, Max I, I somehow I associated. Well, you, you sent out an email. It said something that you'd be late because of. Oh, I said if I can get home. Yes, you are correct. So yeah, there was an email blast, like Dan said, that was sent out. That basically something happened. I don't know if there was an overturned truck or something. Yep. But they closed That's what it from was. Neil Gate to the Rotary, and then Old Oak and Bucket. They closed from the Rotary to Maple Street. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, how do I get home? Because <laughs> yeah, <you don't. laughs> it's like. You just can't get there. <laughs> just keep uh, driving around. But um, by the time I got, uh, I pulled in the driveway, it was like 5.40 or something like mm -hmm. that. And they said that they were going to at least have it closed till 5. So evidently they cleared it out and there was no traffic residual. So like I said, I don't know exactly the specifics of what happened. Maybe someone was so excited that the rotary was finally going to be landscape, they lost control. That could be. <laughs> That's probably what happened. <laughs> or maybe they were just trying to avoid running over the geese. Yeah. You know what's interesting though? That article in the paper, what was it, two weeks or last week? They were saying about like how ugly the rotary was. I mean, it's not ugly. It's not. It's just nothing there. It's nondescript. Yeah. But I wouldn't not say that. Bad that if it's you like weeds. <laughs> what's interesting is every now and then there are just like tire tracks that go right across. Yeah. There. Right. Right. So of all things in this world, I could complain about telephone poles, utilities, broken roads, potholes. I could go on and on and on of things that are quote unquote ugly. And that rotary doesn't come to mind. <laughs> it needs improvement, but I wouldn't go as far as saying it was ugly. Mm -hmm. It works a lot better than I was going to give it credit. <laughs> I'll be very. Yeah, it does work that. pretty well. And I think what made a difference is when they came back up and they relined it, when they put the lines down that, that, that showed it, it was like yeah. a striped area, and then a, and it did because mm -hmm. people it was too wide before, so people were using like both lanes and didn't know where to go. And my only comment would be, <clears throat> if I was a traffic engineer, a few hundred yards before coming south on Route 3A, I would have a sign that says right lane 123 only because I see so many people in the right lane getting on 123 and then realizing that they, they needed to go around the rotary and yeah. then they make a, that sharp left turn that they're not supposed to to get back. Yeah. You know, but I see that all the time. Yeah. But anyway, I'm not a traffic engineer, so. No, but that, that, made, that made a big difference. Do you it want also to made a difference. Yeah, we'll give Eric a call. Yeah, so do you want us to? Oh, there he is. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there he is. It's our, it's our fault. The clock is fast. No, I'm waiting. It is now 7.35. We will call ourselves to order. This is the 
Since we're planning board, then the meeting date is September 13th, 2012. I need a motion to accept the agenda. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, the first item on the agenda is a interview process for the potential alternate member, and the first one up is Monty Newman. Have 20 minutes. I, I was just going to distribute these questions so um, you guys can use okay. them. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. I have some. There's, I already have. I think they were in the packet that Karen they, distributed. Does anybody need them? Uh, no. Everyone has has a set with a twelve. Nope, I have. 12 I have them, them too. Yep. Mm -hmm. I got eight, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> give this to Bill. The last four of mine. So why don't we do this? And if we're rather informal group, Monty, why don't you just give us a little bit of your background and then we'll open up the Great. penetrating questions from the board. <laughs> uh, first, before I get into that, the reason I'm here um, was the article you put, the letter you put in the Mariner. Nicely done, Richard. I, I wasn't you. even aware that there was an alternate position available till I, till I saw your, uh, your, le your um, column, whatever you call it, letter. Um, I've lived in situate with my wife now for 10 years going on 10 years, we're starting our 10th year. Um, I've been the uh, chairperson of the uh, Cable Television Committee now for four years. My term just ended. And I'm looking for a way to contribute something to the town that could trade on some of the abilities that I think that I have. Um, my background is primarily business. I was with NBC and General Electric for about 34 years before I retired. Um, I'm fairly familiar with town government and the way it works. Some of the selectmen that I've worked with when I was involved with the, uh, the cable operation. And initially was involved in the first contract that we negotiated with Comcast all the way through, staffing it, setting it up, moving to the studio and the, at the high school and the whole package. So it, it gave me an opportunity to really learn how the town works. And I can't tell you that I know how it works, but I get, <laughs> I get a, I've got a sense of how it works. We're not sure. Uh, I don't come to the table with any technical background, uh, financial background. It's primarily a business background. And I think, and I, this really kind of bleeds into question number two, the contribution I could make probably to be most effective would be in the business development area, since that's the primary experience that I've had in my, my career. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to learn how to do it, though. And I think that's what you pointed out in your article, that the alternate position really allows you to learn the process and what's involved. And having reviewed the master plan, I can see there's a hell of a lot involved that you can't just learn overnight. Um, I have the time available. I'm retired. When I'm not playing golf, and uh, I could easily participate in whatever work is required of me on the committee. And that's about it. We were my wife and I were born and grew up in this area in Braintree. And when I worked for uh, NBC, I was transferred all over the country. But we ended up here in Situate because, we, frankly, we love the town. And it took us about a year and a half before we could find the house that we now reside in. And uh, we enjoy it here, and I think there's a lot that I can contribute in terms of general thinking that goes into the planning process. But I also think I have a hell of a lot to learn. That's it. Super, thank you. Hmm. Um, I guess Richard, the, you, you, you trapped him with, the, with your letter, so I'll let you start <laughs> off. All right. Great letter. Well, thank you, Monty. And uh, thank you very much for your interest in coming in. I mean, it's fantastic. So, And like you said, I think it is great learning experience. Mm -hmm. So and I think the... You know, the first step is to, to know what you don't know. So I, right. I'm very good at knowing what I don't know, I think. <laughs> so um, uh, <clears throat> you talked about your business background. And I know one of the things that we had done over the last couple of years is actually start up the, or actually Dan helps, uh, really was the spearhead of the Economic Development Committee. Right. So one of the questions here is, you know, how do you balance the sort of economic or business development, or maybe some of the, the skills that you talk about with business development, how do you balance that with the character of the town and, you know, the, the fact of needing growth maybe for tax right. revenues, right. but at the same time keeping the character of Situate? It's tricky, and uh, it's one of the things that I uh, put a fair amount of thought into before coming to this meeting. 
because on one hand you've got the infrastructure of the town, you've got town services, you've got natural environment, you've got the character of the town you want to protect. Now on the other hand you have a tax base that you can only get so much out of the residents. You've got a, I think it's a critical area that has to be developed that the proponents of businesses in this town are all small businesses. The, the taxes that you receive from these businesses, I, I think it's similar to the residential rate, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what the rate would be for a larger corporation, but there's also the issue of space and the type of business you would want to accommodate here. Um, and the impact on the environment, the impact on, as I mentioned, the infrastructure, the services, police, the whole package. It's something that I, frankly, would feel comfortable working on as part of the board because I've had a lot of experience dealing with businesses at various levels. But again, I have to better understand what the needs of the town are in terms of available space, types of businesses that would be acceptable. Um, it's an area of opportunity if it's handled properly, I think. Great. Thank you. I tend to run off at the mouth, so just <laughs> wave your finger when I'm... <laughs> I can go on, but I'll let Dan... <laughs> well, Richard took my question. But, oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, but, uh, stole yeah, your thunder. I've been very focused on economic development and trying to get that going for the town, you know, looking at the tax base here and, mm -hmm. and ways to, um, you know, get revenue from other sources than just purely doing right. override year after year. And um, it's been a problem in town for quite some time it, it's a tough issue because availability like you're talking about um, so we're starting to look at areas that we could do you know changes to zoning and things like that to accommodate mm -hmm. certain new industry to come in or certain types of businesses it's right. very difficult because of course you want to preserve the character of the town and have low impact types of businesses but um, one of the areas we've talked a little bit about is 3a and wanted mm -hmm. to get your thoughts about that I'm not familiar with what you decided there, but we haven't decided anything at this point. It's just a discussion stage. About, but obviously, yeah. if you can move them, if there's such a business, and again, I'm winging it because I don't know what type of business we'd be talking to, but um, certainly along 3A, uh, possibly North Situate, although that's somewhat problematical, uh, Greenbush area, maybe. Um, I think I read somewhere in the master plan that something like 19% of the land is available for development, if I've got that number right. So what type of business would be a good business? Would it be a blue collar, white collar? Would it be manufacturing? Would it be, I mean... Yeah, it wouldn't be manufacturing. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But <laughs> There's I mean, so many environmental concerns in town, I don't think that would ever come crazy into play. But. Um, I guess size is probably one of the key things number of employees, impact on traffic in the town, um, policing, I mean the whole gamut of concerns that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. um, certainly the 3A area would be a good area I would think because it would keep it away from the downtown area but it would keep it within the city, town limits. Um, I don't really know beyond that. I mean, I, it's something I'd have to really get into mentally to find out where something like that would be appropriate. I think there's sort of two schools of thought, I think. Um, one is, you know, keep everything the way it is, and, you know, and preserve that at all costs. And the other one is, you know, do sort of selective changes that have sort of the minimal impact on what we have that's good now. I think you need, you need businesses in here. I mean, I, I, to me, it's a priority. If it fits the environment and all that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And I realize that's easier said than done, mm -hmm. but to me it's a key part of protecting the, the town in the long run yeah. to increase the tax base. Uh, yeah, I agree, and a lot of the towns around us have been very successful in doing that mm -hmm. over the years, and I, I mean that's one of the, the planning conundrums, you know, that we deal with is trying to figure out a way to plan that to sort of satisfy a lot of interest. But like, an, for example, and I'm winging it, so I may this may be a mistake, but I'm winging. It. I tend to do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if it was an industrial park, uh, not manufacturing, but that would allow for offices within a park, if that was appropriate, 
I don't even know if such a part would, would work now because of the problems that we've had with the economy. But it would attract maybe a white collar type of business. Um, that probably would have, have less of a negative impact on the environment. But then how do you promote it? They're promoting the town to encourage businesses to come here. Why would they want to come here? Well, they, w one of the reasons is we live here. Mm -hmm. We know why we like Situate. Has it been communicated out to the business community, maybe in Boston, Cambridge, or wherever? Um, maybe research firms. I mean, I'm, I'm totally winging it now, but it, it could be something in that, in, that, right. uh, in that vein that wouldn't have a negative impact on the environment. Right, and we actually recently had a proposal out, a budget request that was denied actually to get some funding to do a study of that. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the direction we're hoping to go is actually start researching that a little bit more. Good. Um, I thought the, the idea of the council, though, that you set up was excellent. It's a good start. Thanks. Robert? Um, I'm a little curious, and certainly I think we're all on the same, on the same track. You know, how can we increase the town's revenue at some point, mm -hmm. take the, the sort of onus off the, the backs of the homeowners to some degree. And at the same time, there's no question that the infrastructure of the town has suffered greatly and needs ideally a lot of work or mm -hmm. even replacement rather than work. Mm -hmm. So we talk, you know, off and on, but more than occasionally about things like a new school or things like <clears throat> uh, a new uh, public safety center, um, new town hall, mm -hmm. uh, repairs and upgrades. And that's certainly part of the master plan study that's going to go forward, you know, a real hard look at the, uh, at the needs of the infrastructure. But you don't have to look too hard to know that the needs are there. That's right. And they're substantial. Right. So it's really going to come down to, in the next decade, or sooner, you would like to think, but certainly it's, something's got to happen in that next time frame of 10 years. That's going to cost the town some money mm -hmm. and ta cost taxpayers money, and uh, um, but just needs to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, like me, you're older and don't have children in the school system, for example, right. but right. it's still pretty well known that good schools attract you know, buyers to homes drive the prices up. You know, it's a it's a positive, absolutely positive benefit. And the the converse of that is that uh, if you don't have good schools, then you've got a problem. So I think you know that must be one of the we you know deal with minor site plan review and and. Uh, zoning and, 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 and planning issues on a micro scale that might affect one, one lot or even a subdivision. Uh, but the overall kind of thread behind everything really is the e economic development and viability going forward of the town. Uh, so I think you've, you know, we've all, we, we can all agree to that and you've hit on that as well. So I think your background in business and um, you know, in successful business, knowing how to, knowing how businessmen operate, think, and deal with one another, would be valuable. In some, in some ways too, uh, in my experience at GE and NBC was, it's a selling job too. Mm -hmm. It's finding the right fit, and once you decide on a category and a type of business that would be appropriate for the town, that the committee or the board agrees on, then you just zero in on them. You go after them. Um, and that sounds easier said than done, but it, it can be done. Uh, I'm not at all uh, timid when it comes to that part of the process, <laughs> as you might have guessed. It's a sales, it's a sales job. Mm -hmm. And why are, they, why are they located where they are now? What are they paying to be there tax-wise? What problems are they running into with commuters to their, you know, their, their employees? How many of their employees are based on the South Shore, living on the South Shore, that would rather commute to Situate than Boston? I mean, I'm winging it, but this is the type of thinking that has to 
go into the pot to decide what type of business you want to go after in the first place. And then once you've identified the business, the board, the committee agrees on it, you go after them. And it's probably a long process, but you, sometimes you hit the hit the lucky nut, you know, you, you, you go in when someone's lease is expiring on their property. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sales job. Can I uh, ask a question on that, Mr. Chairman? Sure. <laughs> in that regard, we had a situation where we had floated the idea <clears throat> of a business improvement district in downtown, in the harbor area of Situate as a way to increase um, funds and maybe beautify the, the, this, the uh, downtown area. But that's a hard sell, obviously, because it's, it's born on the back of the individual business owners or the people that own those buildings mm -hmm. um, to pay a fee, uh, and all people have to pay, except in Massachusetts, I guess you can opt you can out. Opt out yeah. What is it? Like, and, and I think Downtown Crossing in Boston was one of the, is the first business improvement district in the state. Um, and I believe there are others. There was the one in Hyannis, I think, that we looked at as well. So I guess my question to you, since you were talking about the sales job, is that was a, probably a really hard sales job. Like, how would you feel about taking something like that that maybe is not very popular with the business community per se, but will have economic or that will have benefits to the entire community? That's um, what I do. Would you I feel mean, you, you just you just hit? Yeah. Would you feel comfortable oh, yeah. doing that kind of a sales job? Yeah. That's what I do. I mean, that's what I've done. Not what I do now. I retired now. <laughs> okay. That, that's what I do. It's identifying the businesses and talking to them. It's, it's very simple. And finding out what their needs are. And once we know what their needs are, it's a marketing equation. Then you bring it back to how do we solve their marketing need, whatever it might be, whether it's location, commuting, taxes, whatever it might be. And the board certainly has the brain power, I assume. <laughs> to provide guidance in that area in terms of what we can do. Um, I don't know, and I, again, I'm winging this, I don't know how much outreach is taking place in the first place. I mean, some of you are employed, you have jobs, there's only so much time you can spend doing this. Mm -hmm. um, show up a couple of meetings a month, I mean, that takes time. You get involved in projects, you have to go into a lot of different things. I have the time to do a lot of that. And my wife would be happy because she won't have to deal with me. But that's another issue. <laughs> but I think that's probably the big thing I can take <coughs> the game. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. <coughs> I First, feel like I know you. I don't know why. I'm, uh, I'm almost impossible to miss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to admit, I, 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 find myself, I find myself from time to time walking in a, in a large crowd of people. <laughs> And I look over at the uh, at the mirrored windows that are next, right. and I and I see this these head and shoulders, and I look and say, "Who is that?" And then I realize it's me. Um, first of all, thank you for coming. Well, you. We we really appreciate your willingness and and uh, and uh, your ability to serve, and and we look forward to finding a very important spot for you. Uh, and uh, if it happens to be on our board, that would be wonderful. I have a comment, and then I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. The comment um, is, as as you, I think yourself, have identified. Um, there's a lot of a lot to learn here, and the learning the learning curve is long and steep. Right. Um, I've been on the board now, Dan and I, and uh, and Richard for the first time when he came as our associate member, two and a half years, and I, I'm I'm still not comfortable, um, you know, uh, dealing with a lot of these things. Um, so it's okay for you to be lost at the beginning. Probably for the first couple of years, actually. Better now. Yeah. So, so <laughs> you know, don't don't beat yourself up over that. Um, and with that said, uh, you know, the the things we've focused on mostly here are the business things. Those, are the, those that's where our passion is, I think, really. Um, uh, but the thing that takes up the most of our time are these these real estate development issues, um, and those are critical to business in town too. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I would encourage you to to, uh, uh, to develop a plan to come up to speed. Do the study that you have to do. Ask the questions that you have to ask, and uh, and get to the point where you feel really comfortable about uh, about doing things. I'm pleased to hear that you're retired and that you have the time to devote. Right. Um, uh, I, I wish that I had the uh, the several hours that um, every meeting is justified in taking in preparation. But mm -hmm. those of us who are regularly employed just don't have the time. You don't. That's right. um, so we find ourselves relying upon Bill. 
who is the, the, re the receptacle of all knowledge. <laughs> And uh, uh, and he he is uh, kind of our beacon as to where we ought to be and what we ought to be doing. And the staff is uh, endlessly helpful. The uh, the question that I have is this: is that um, I'm a local business person like uh, like many of us are. Um, and the perception that I have, and I think borne out by the by my experience and the common experience of other business people, is that uh, many of the retail dollars in our town go north and west. Uh, and, uh, and every marketing manual I've ever read says the first place to start is your existing customer base. It costs a lot less to market to them and to keep them happy. Okay. So what can we do to keep these dollars in our town and not going to our neighboring towns uh, for goods and services? What type of business are you in? I'm one of those nefarious lawyers. Oh, you are? Yes. Well, a lot of it, I mean, I, this, is, this is kind of a trick question because I'll give you a trick answer. Um, Situate is an interesting destination point for a lot of people. It's a little out of the way if you're coming from Hingham or if you come not Hingham so much as uh, probably Braintree or Weymouth or south of here Duxbury. I mean these towns have all evolved in their own way. They have their own centers of commerce, so to speak. They have their own personalities. That's it. Yeah. And to me, uh, it's establishing Situate as a destination point, a reason you have to go there. And what is that destination point? We know one of the reasons is the ocean, the beaches. Are local businesses the reason? Probably not, unless you want to go to a nice restaurant. Go to a bank, you can go to a bank anywhere. Uh, what are the business, what's the business profile that would cause people to want to come here? Is it well, a clothing well, store, whatever. I what what I'm talking about specifically, though, at least in, in my profession, is what can we do to keep people from going to Boston to buy legal services and to buy them here locally? What can we do to have people, uh, you know, we have Rivermore Engineering here in town, quality engineering firm. That's promotion to okay. me, that's marketing, totally. Okay. And there's no reason why, I, I misunderstood your question. Uh, that happens no to me a lot, so don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a lawyer. <laughs> um, we'll, start in lawyer we'll start on lawyer jokes in a few minutes. No. Um, it's, it's the business community itself promoting itself to the residents of the town. I've been here 10 years, and I can't tell you who the lawyers are in this town, for example or who the people are that prepare my would prepare my taxes, mm -hmm. or who the people are that I might consider as a doctor or a dentist, because I've established these centers somewhere else. Um, and that we lived here before, we came back to the Boston area. So I mean, I had a familiarity with the area. So if I had a dentist in Cohasset before, I hooked up with them when I came back. So to me, it's a marketing issue. It's letting people know what's available here in their own town and why it's good for them to support it. How do we do that? Um, easier said than done because your Chamber of Commerce is one vehicle. Frankly, the town is a vehicle. It's to the town's advantage to promote your business. If they can do it in a way without naming you specifically, conflict of interest and all that mucky stuff. That's what the, the Business Improvement District is designed to get around. See, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, one of maybe one of the things. Yeah. Me, that's, <laughs> one of the many things. That's they the do, vehicle. Yeah. It's a communications thing. It's using the Mariner. It's 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 getting people like yourself to write an article on something and publicizing. It's public relations, I guess, to a degree. In terms of the medium. Uh, it's getting involved in the town cable operation. Um, that was one of my frustrations before. I was heavily involved in setting it up and getting it, handling the back room, getting the, getting the thing organized so mm -hmm. that Trisha could look at a business plan and understand what the hell we were talking about. But there are three elements in that cable operation a lot of people don't know about. There's the schools, students, and they do a wonderful job. And the studio is based at the school. There's the public access point, and there's a the government point. We know about the government point because we see all these boring meetings on the, on the system. <laughs> except for this one. You're not participating. President company, <laughs> excluded. President company ex <laughs> accepted. But there's also a public access point that probably hasn't been fully developed yet. 
And that's the part where people who own businesses in this town can actually promote what they do and, and offer service on the air at the same time, offer uh, information to people that would be of value. Maybe uh, two or three lawyers get together and do a thing on uh, wills. I'm making this up. How to, how to prepare a will and what you should look for, or estate planning. You get two or three of these people on a, on a panel, it does the town good to promote something like this. So it's promotion, public relations, advertising. Pretty good, thank you. Okay, I, I have an advantage over the rest of you guys. I also am retired and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, I am the subject of Monty's picking to find out why did the board do this or why did the board do that. So <laughs> it's not unique to Monty, but it ends up that uh, it's a good test so that I, I get to be able to explain to him why we've done what we've done. You hook up Widow's Walk? Yes. That's the question we, we should We support the local yeah, business. Selling Widow's Walk. <laughs> uh, of of so collecting <laughs> used golf balls out of the brush. I guess it's the really the, the question, and, and, you know, and although we've, we've talked about a lot of different things, um, this, this appointment is actually going to bring you until the first part of next year. At that point, then you'd have to, <clears throat> you'd have to stand for election, and I just want to make sure that you'd be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. I would. Any, any other questions? Um, no, I think we've um, hit our time limit, I believe. Well, we're, we've, got, we've got a couple extra minutes. Oh, that's right. There was a question in here that I found kind of Not interesting. Really you have um, to. About the master plan. Yep. Um, what I thought about it, and I, it was quite a document. I mean, I went blind reading it, but it was, it's, <laughs> it's quite a guide, I'm telling you. You know that. You'll be interested to know we're in the middle of trying to, re trying to update that. Yeah, and it's about eight years now. That's one of the things that came through. But mm -hmm. in the housing area, um, there's a section there about nonconforming housing uh, that they recommend to be managed properly, which I don't think it is. There's a section there about multifamily units being, being a good thing for the town if they're placed properly, Greenbush, North Situate, uh, use up less land, uh, allow young couples to come into this town when they can't afford to buy a house, becomes the base for the future of the town. They bring children with them, the whole nine yards. Management of growth was another area I thought was interesting for both business and residential. Economic development, which we've talked about, and it is a tricky question to get the full balance here. And then uh, the one I found more interesting, the management of the master plan's implementation suggestions. There are a lot of good suggestions in that plan, but who manages it? I mean, who's responsible? I know I'm looking for that job, by the way. Who's, who's <laughs> responsible for seeing that all of this stuff that has been suggested is either done or not done? It's Laura, isn't it? A lot. Well, <laughs> you guys don't have, I, I think don't have it, the time. I think it's various, um, you know, town um, uh, agencies. You know, it's the planning board, it's the board of selectmen. It's but there's no number. one person or group that's responsible. It's well, probably then, well. Actually, we're responsible for the master plan itself, the document. So. Which was great, but I mean, the, a key part of it is if you want the master plan to work. It, you have to implement the plan. Exactly. That's a it's a challenge, and we've been going through a process. And when you throw the past like year, with General Electric, I mean, you throw implementation that. out to a bunch of people, nothing happens. Well, we're in the middle of this, and the problem that we have is that we have responsibility for the plan, but not much in the way of authority. Right. And but we're really good salespeople. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, it's really kind of a matrix responsibility, and we, we I guess we're really the line leaders or the pushers. Yeah, I think you have to sort of select and prioritize, which is what we've been trying to do over the past year. We've been going section by section and trying to come up with a consensus as to what the big pushes should be, because if you read that, literally millions of ideas on there. Oh, oh, there's a ton of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Eco economic development was the first one, I think, that we sort of tackled yeah. affirmatively and got a committee started and are heading that right. direction, I think. But there are others that are very important as well. well what we're finding is like pushing a piece of string. It's a great idea. It's just hard to do. Yeah. Right. And there is a plan for the infrastructure, I think. This is six or seven or eight years old. I, I don't know where I got this. I think I got it off the website. Public facilities, infrastructure, and services, and the five-year plan, and yep. it's updated annually, which looks good to me. I mean, I don't know, frankly. Yeah. But the DPW is responsible yeah, That's kind of merged of into the, capital, the five-year capital plan. Yeah. Um, 
I guess that's it. I'm going to shut up. I can say something. <laughs> okay. Money. Thank you. Thank you. For yep. Spending party your evening with us. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Meet with the selectmen on Tuesday. Is that the, the, the process? Is goes like this: is the fact that that we we do the interviewing, and then we'll come back up and make a recommendation to the board of selectmen. At that point, and that point is Tuesday at seven thirty. Right around seven. 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 Seven thirty. Seven. Um, seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there at 7. Might want it to be um, And then it'll be a joint vote. So it'll be a roll call vote for it. So the candidates don't have to be there? No. no. Yes, I, I think they... Oh, the, oh, the they candidates there in case they don't. They want to meet have. both the candidates. I'm sorry? They wanted to meet both yeah. the candidates. What if they don't like us? <laughs> <laughs> no. Goodbye. That's the risk you take. <laughs> Thank you. Right, Thank Thanks you, very much. Thanks, Bonnie. Are you next? Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> you heard all the questions. <laughs> I assume you're Stephen? Yes. Bob Chair. As, as you may have gathered, we're kind of an informal process here. Uh, that's great. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, we have a golfer and a tennis player. Aha. Uh -huh. You may be a golfer too, I just don't know. That's a bunch of I'm not much of a golfer. <laughs> a little better tennis player. Why don't you introduce yourself and kind of just tell us why, why you're here, which, why, sure. why you're looking to give up a couple Thursday nights a month. <laughs> well, I, I've lived in Situate with my wife and my daughter, although she's now flown the coop. She's in college right now uh, for about 18 years. And, uh, you know, this has really become, and we call this place our home. We really uh, enjoy Situate. And uh, I've, been, I've been working in different capacities for quite a long time, but um, I've found as my daughter left school that I was looking for an opportunity to come back and, and maybe add a little value to the town itself and, and, and participate in some way in uh, helping the town manage its growth and, and going forward. Uh, my background is, is a little more eclectic than Monty's. Uh, I've been in business for many years. Uh, I, I'm a, by training, I'm a uh, uh, mechanical engineer. Uh, I got my mechanical engineering degree from Northeastern University. I have an MBA from uh, Loyola University. And um, I've been in, in the energy business, the commercial real estate business, in some venture capital investing, and, and a lot of other sort of smaller things beyond that. Um, and in between all of that, in between 2003 and 2007, I worked in the, the Romney administration and state government, including at, in four different jobs there, including as Secretary of Environmental Affairs. So I've been through uh, a bit of the local process on both sides of the, the, uh, the dais here, if you will, um, particularly in the energy business. Um, if you want to try to permit something really hard in a town, try to permit a power plant. Um, it's very difficult to do, um, and, you know, it's a necessary function of, of uh, you know, business and residences and, and just supplying power to, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but uh, finding a place where you can put a power plant that um, sort of manages the impacts with the benefits is a difficult thing to do, and, and at the end of the day, it's always local. It's always in a town somewhere. So they spent a lot of time in front of planning boards and zoning boards and uh, conservation commissions in local towns and, um, and on the state side at the Energy Facility Siding Board um, and in, at MEPA and many other locations. Um, and then I found myself uh, in 2003 on the other side of that coin as the regulator. I was actually uh, the Secretary of Environmental Affairs for a while. Uh, so I was reviewing uh, all MEPA applications that came into the Commonwealth and, and signing off on those. Uh, I was a member of the Energy Facility Siding Board, so I was on the other side again. Um, so I, I've had quite a, uh, uh, a broad level of experience, particularly in sort of how government interacts with business. and. Uh, it's been, it was quite an eye-opening experience too, uh, being on the other side. Um, I really enjoyed the time that I was there. Um, I had the opportunity to, to actually participate in a few things that were happening here in Situate as well, including uh, 
the Marine Center that uh, that's, that was built recently down in the, in the harbor. Um, on top of that, I, I was, as secretary, I was also um, the chairman of the board for the MWRA. And, um, and on top of all of those things, about, about uh, July 2006, I think you'll all remember the uh, ceiling collapse in the in the connector tunnel in the big dig mm -hmm. um, and uh, Governor Romney asked me to run the stem to stern safety review uh, that, that came out of that collapse basically so my last six months sort of in state government uh, I spent the time doing the comprehensive safety review of the big dig um, so I had quite quite this breadth of activities uh, I spent the last four years really on sort of a commercial real estate development side and it was it was outside the country and it was development that was really focused on sort of uh, hospitality uh, hotels uh, that kind of development and the challenge there that, um, that I spent a lot of time on was figuring out how to do that in a sustainable way and trying to figure out how to do sort of low impact development this was on a Caribbean island, and um, the the challenges were many. Um, you know, the, the challenges of development here in Situate are are definitely significant and complex. Um, but in a place that's so remote that they got electricity ten years ago, um, the challenges are multiplied by a factor of ten, um, and so. Uh, I guess I say all that just to give you sort of the, the breadth and sort of the eclectic nature of the, the work I've done. And, uh, and to, uh, you know, I think, I think that, that breadth of experience could bring a lot of experience to the, to the planning board here. And um, as, as Monty said before me, there's still a lot to learn. Um, I haven't been in the, in the nuts and bolts of planning board activities uh, for quite some time and um, and never on the sort of the other side of the table and um, I would look forward to the opportunity to to uh, participate so thank you thank you uh, let's see we started with Richard last time we'll start with Eric <laughs> welcome <clears throat> um, the first question that comes to my mind is uh, uh, because of your previous experience in the in the Romney administration here in the state, uh, if uh, if our beloved former governor is successful in his national campaign, are you likely to be sucked off into uh, a, a national <laughs> assignment? No, no. Okay, Massachusetts, my home. <clears throat> All right, I plan to stay here. Um, I, I find that your uh, your experience is is fascinating. Um, uh, you know, you've seen like everyone else that we're, we're in the middle of trying to develop, uh, you know, our own power generation. We're trying to deal effectively with uh, the infrastructure, the lack of infrastructure. Um, we don't have an engineer on the board, um, so uh, I think that's, a, that's an interesting thing. Um, what are some things in the town that you've identified that we can do better? And, well, and, and, and sort of in a, in a list of priorities. What, what, what are the first three things that we should focus on in our town to do better? Well, I, I would say that I think a lot of the focus has begun, that, that there's certainly a huge infrastructure issue here that has to be addressed, whether it's, you know, facilities or in-the-ground infrastructure, pipes, um, sewer, water, those kinds of things. Uh, I think the big challenge on all of that is the tax base that we have right now is almost 100% residential. And, and a lot of older people living on fixed incomes, you know, you just can go to the well only so often. So I think, I think the focus on economic development is, is spot on. That's the one that really, really needs to be addressed. And, and I'm not saying it hasn't in some degree because the master plan actually tries to address some of that economic development activity and it, you know, the, the focus on the individual villages and trying to improve those. Um, well, then let me ask, let me modify my question a little mm -hmm. bit. I, I have to tell you that um, the, the issue of economic development has been frustrating. Um, 
and, and it's perhaps the nature of small, small towns, and that it just takes so long. Um, from your experience as, a, as a, a state official, what can we do to, do to make these things move along faster? I mean, from a permitting perspective or from the, the perspective of identifying actual businesses that are interested in locating here? From, from, the, from the standpoint of actually generating more income. Yeah. What can we do? Uh, you know, how long should it reasonably take? Uh, and what can we do to, to make that happen? Well, I think the challenges aren't necessarily in the permitting process and okay. all of that. Okay. I think the challenges are in the sort of the specific nature of the location the the distance from places like Boston, the the difficulty of getting to these locations, I think I think one of the things you you face there is that you know Situate's not an easy place to get to, and and there are a lot of people who will come to to Situate and vacation here. I mean it, it draws people in the summertime in particular, but it's not you know it's it's not a place people think of in terms of a well I'm going to locate my business there and and, and and that's where I want to, you know, I need 100,000 square feet of office space there. It's just, it's just not a location. It's, it's a long way from, from the airport. It's hard to get to. Um, things that have improved are public transportation. The train has made, I, I think, has made a significant difference in terms of the ability to get back and forth to, to Boston um, and, and provides public transportation. Um, but... You're still hamstrung by the sort of the the nature of geography um, that Situate has. I mean, that shouldn't shouldn't limit your thinking in terms of the ability to try to bring additional business here, because if you look around, that has happened in certain places. If, you know, you look at Accord Park. You know, they they were relatively successful in in bringing some business development over there, and and in Hingham along 3A, there's still some business development happening there. You know, small, small office buildings, but, but it still happens. Um, so I think the challenge there is really finding and trying to recruit businesses that match the town's sort of need, if you will, and uh, doesn't impact the character of the town, which I, I think is still kind of an overarching theme here, is that you want to preserve the culture, the history, the character of a, you know, this quintessential New England seacoast town. I mean, that's really what it is. And uh, I think that's what brings, you know, that's, that's what brings all the interest in the summertime, you know. Um, and uh, so I, I, I don't think there's any easy answers to it. I, that's, what, that's what I would say. Uh, and I mean, there it's aren't. more than just a marketing thing. I think, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of challenges here and um, probably need some additional help in terms of, sort of sorting out what might possibly fit in a place like this, too. Okay. Thank you very much. Robert? Yeah, I mean, to, just to follow along with that theme, I tend to think in sort of geography terms as well, but on the scale of where would you put a business if you could recruit that business? You know, what areas of the town um, are zoned for it or could be rezoned? Um, what areas are impacted by wetlands so that development there would be difficult? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, what's the, what's the road system? What's the utility system that can support the business? And I think, you know, we haven't sat down and really gone through that piece by piece, but my sense is when we do, or when someone does, in, in terms of restudying the master plan, um, we're going to be limited. We're going to be quite limited uh, unless some kind of bold moves are made. And I think one of them would be to, to rezone perhaps land along 3A from residential to commercial. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the town's appetite for that would be, but um, we'll see. Um, I would think that the challenge there is even if you rezone it to figure out a way to do it so you minimize the impacts. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. The quarter impacts and all that, and uh, this, this was something I was working on on this other project too. Is is to figure out how you make um, you make access to those kinds of things that are fairly have are fairly invisible almost uh, as you're driving down a parkway, mm -hmm. um, and the ability to try to design around that is is something that you know certainly should be thought about in that in that guise but the the bigger question really becomes 
you know, uh, can we can we get a consensus on rezoning to provide that, uh, you know, to provide for that kind of commercial development? Right. But right. right now, I think the town's commercial tax base is less than five percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it? It's like three percent. Three percent. Yeah. 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 Ninety-seven three. Um, good. Yeah. Um, I guess a couple things to follow up on that. Situate is very geographically challenged, obviously, but Cohasset is as well. And over about the past, we did a couple, um, I put together a couple studies of tax bases and things like that. And over about the past 10 to 15 years, they've more or less doubled their commercial tax base. They have roughly doubled the per, ca per capita commercial tax base, what we have in Situate. Um, I think they have a lot of the same geographical challenges. I'm not thrilled about the way 3A looks in that I section. That's, that's and, and I think that one of, the, one of the hurdles, it might be a marketing hurdle, but when we talk about development on 3A, people picture that, and that's not what we're picturing as a board. We've never pictured that. We've right. always pictured, you know, sustainable, you mm -hmm. know, uh, tree line development, you well, know, hiding maybe, the not, not big box retailers and things like that. Maybe but more the example in Cohasset of the, the new one by the train station. Sure, yeah, and that developer actually came down and spoke to the Economic Development Committee. Mm -hmm. How can we do something that's that's nice? Um, I, I'm sure you've had to overcome a lot of uh, hurdles and consensus building in your career. H how do you how do you deal with sort of the misinformation that's out there? The, you know, these proposals, they get shot down before they even get off the ground. and it's like they say there's no politics like local politics. There's always a very vocal minority that comes out on just about anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Even some of the obvious answers we've come up with with some of these problems. How do you deal with that on a consensus building level? It, it, as you've discovered, it's not easy. Um, it, it, takes, it takes some fairly dedicated effort to try to include people in the stakeholders in the process and there's there's almost no shortcut to that I mean you really need to get stakeholders identified who are willing to participate in the process and bring them in and make it a constructive conversation and it, it won't necessarily start as a constructive conversation it takes right. a while to get there um, face this a lot particularly with the development design development of some of the central artery parks and you want to talk about stakeholders there were dozens of them from all different walks of life all taxpayers who were paying for the big dig and all interested in what you know the final look and feel of some of the central artery parks look like uh, and that took a long time to really bring those parties together around uh, you know, uh, sort of a, a consensus design. And, and even then, you're not going to please 100% of the people. It just won't happen. Right. Uh, but you need to get enough of a, of a momentum in consensus to be able to get over them. Uh, it's, there's no magic bullet for them. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're finding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. One, one follow-up, one real quick I want sure. to ask about as well is that obviously you have tremendous experience at the state level. Um, sometimes I feel that Situate doesn't have as strong of a state connection as maybe it could. I see some other communities that, you know, get certain grants. Um, I yep. think, you know, Weymouth got one. I think Braintree, Marshfield got one a while back for mm -hmm. sort of the things we're talking about. And I think part of it might be sort of a, maybe a lack of knowledge on, you know, my part, certainly, about how to make some of those connections. Yep. Um, how can you help in that area? I'm assuming you can with your background. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with most of the grant programs, particularly out of environmental affairs, but we worked in, in, in the administration I was in, we actually sort of tried to coordinate housing, um, community development, and environment kind of all together, and transportation. So, um, you know, there was a lot of cross connections there where you began to understand the different grant programs that exist out there. So I think from that perspective, I think I, I still have a lot of people I know, you know, who are still involved in those programs and, and being able to reach out and just find the right person is, is mm -hmm. about 80% of the battle. Um, and then figuring out what the, what the requirements are for a particular grant, grant program and what the timing is, because all of them have different timings, you know, and generally they're done it's not a rolling grant program in a lot of these. You know, they're done once a year through a, a particular sequence. So 
I think I could provide a lot of sort of insight and background in how to reach out for that. Great. I'll follow up on that. That was actually kind of my question. I'll change mine a little bit. <laughs> um, well, I think, you know, uh, <clears throat> Eric was talking about how, you know, we, we can basically try to create a sort of a foundation or a structure, but yet we actually have not a lot of authority per mm -hmm. se. So how do we create the correct environment or structure? And I think we've tried to do that. For instance, and then I was going to ask about the grant, like we talked about the business improvement district mm -hmm. where there was a grant for consulting fees, and I think it was what? 20,000 or 30,000, something 20, like that. Quarter. Yeah, where we went down and actually Laura did an amazing job of actually, you know, creating the proposal, or not, what do you call it, not the proposal, but the application, application. thank you, <laughs> down there. And I think, I think a lot of us didn't have that much experience in doing those kinds of things. And um, I know there's a lot, I shouldn't say there's a lot, but there's certainly a significant amount of money out there in these different programs that could help and assist situate. So my question was like, do you have some experience, maybe not just in the connections like you asked, but maybe even writing the proposals? Or we've talked about like, to use Cohasset as an example, the Avalon, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, the apartment complex that was built off of 3A. Right. You know, they've, they've done a nice job there. It's, it's bringing, um, you know, families into Cohasset. It's uh, increasing the tax base. But I have to point out, though, I know a family that lives there, and they just bought a house in our town, and they're moving next okay. month. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Um, so, it's but the, the error of the way. <laughs> we've actually talked about, you know, if we did have zoning and then actually writing a request for proposal for a multifamily dwelling, you know, how would we go about even doing that? Mm -hmm. So I think that's where we're looking at is we don't even know sometimes how to begin. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask the question is, like, would you bring some skills in that way of, like, maybe – uh, the experience of writing some of these things or maybe yeah. being more proactive where it, it uh, could be right. beneficial? Well, I, have to, I have to admit I haven't written grant applications. Okay. Um, I've reviewed them. I've approved them, um, but I haven't written them. Um, and I had organizations that actually, conservation services out of the secretary's office did a lot of the self-help grants and those kinds of things. So I had organizations that did that. And um, you know, my sort of my role was more on sort of senior management role, really um, reviewing the grant decisions, basically. Um, but that doesn't mean that I, I don't know people who are involved in all of those organizations and, and could reach out and talk to them about how do you get started, you know, per perhaps having a, an initial kickoff meeting. Um, and, and, you know, you shouldn't get caught up in just the application itself. Um, we should also enlist the local representatives to, you know, make sure that the, the spotlight's on it, you know, at the state level as well. Uh, it, it, it's, it's more of a um, concerted effort uh, in, in different areas to try to push that. Because let's face it, there's 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts, and they're all interested in these kinds of things. So trying to get on the list and then up the list where the line's drawn, where the funding is, um, is still a challenge. And sometimes it will take multiple years. Um, but if you have, if you have a, a, a project that has real merit, um, I think at the end of the day, you might miss funding for one year but get it the next year because, you know, the, again, the, the agencies only have so much capital they really can put to use in any given year. Okay. Can I ask a follow-up? That would be okay? Thank you. I mean, before you do that, uh, it's 8.30 and we've got a site plan administrative review. We will f finish up probably maybe five, ten minutes out and then we can do your your waiver, administrative review for your salt shed. But just let you know. Five minutes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you want me to wait five minutes? Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. we're... I'll wait as long as I need to wait. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Um, about six months ago or so, uh, in connection with our, our library in town, I, I found myself uh, volunteering because I didn't know any better to, to write a grant application. It didn't fly. It was the first one I'd ever done. My question, though, is this, is that based upon your experience of having reviewed grant apps and approving them or being in the process, is there a system or are there, are there people whose names you see a lot of the time that are successful? Um, how can we get better at, at writing grant applications without trying to reinvent the wheel each time? 
Well, I, I think the single most important thing is to make sure you know who's running sort of administratively the grant program because that's the person you really need to understand what the requirements and how the, the uh, sort of uh, priority making is done. Mm -hmm. um, and it's done, it's not arbitrary. It's done with a sort of a point system for the different kinds of values that your particular program brings to that overall grant objective. And, um, you know, the more you can sort of make sure it's tailored to meet the objectives of the grant program, the better chance you have of, of being on the top of the list instead of the middle or the bottom. And, you know, I have to say, I've, I've looked at lists of grant applications that, you know, there had to be 100, 100 applications, and, you know, we had to draw a line at 15 or 10 because of, you know, just available capital. Are, are some clearly head and shoulders above others, or, or, are, they, or, are, they, or are they sort of do you have to artificially separate to choose the ones you're going to pick? Some have been through the process before. They understand it. They know what really needs to be there to be a top-level grant. So there are definitely organizations that are very good at this. Okay, um, you know, you, you, particularly like you know, Somerville and places like uh, you know. I'm just pulling a couple off the top of my head, but that's what I want to hear. But they're very good at at. Um, evaluating what they need to have and really really structuring the program that they're trying to fund to meet the needs of the grant program and do, and do these towns look like they have perhaps professional grant writers as part of their uh, you know part of their staff um, not necessarily not necessarily I think they hire they have uh, you know a professional planning staff right and I, th I think we might have one planner, <laughs> uh, where they might have more than that. Uh, they might have somebody who spends more time working on grant applications. Um, and, you know, the city of Somerville is going to just be a bigger organization because of it. Um, but you are sort of competing with that. But one of the things that, at least in, in my organizations, we, we tried to focus on was you, you'll get a lot of fairly close grant applications. and. You know, we wanted to try to make sure that we sort of spread the wealth around the Commonwealth too. That it wasn't it wasn't always going to the same organization as well. So, there there is some thought about making sure that you know it's not all going to the city of Boston or, or you know that kind of thing uh, because it's limited. It's it's pretty limited, and you know, a twenty thousand dollar grant to the city of Boston might not mean as much as it would to the to the town of Situate just in terms of you know the amount of of overall funding that you know that Boston might bring in versus Situate. So, so there is a level of sort of uh, fairness that I think that uh, the state agencies try to look at to say uh, you know, there are other organizations. In, in fact, I think that was uh, the reason I was here one year as secretary was to provide some funding that that went to the Marine Center. Thank you. Quick question. Um, we, we talked about Situate being a destination. And once you've determined that's where you want to go, you come to Situate. And within Situate, you find that there are very unique sections. I've got Minot, I've got Humrock, I've got North Situate, I've got, I got the harbor, I've got Greenbush. And one of the things i kind of been grappling with is how do I come back up and, and, and at a broad level provide economic development without adversely impacting any of these particular areas and I'll, without losing the identity that, that these, these individual areas have, have, have acquired. Uh, it takes a lot of work and you, you, you know, to make an omelet, you've got to break a few eggs and there, there will be compromises you're going to have to make. Uh, but, you know, since it's been around for 375 years and it's changed over 375 years and there's no reason to expect that it won't change as it goes along into the next you know, decade or two. Um, you know, the, the whole, the, the world is changing and, and, you know, I think we have to find ways to sort of work within the new, the changes and the paradigms that are, that are coming, but still trying to hold on to the character, I think, the overall character of the town. It's not an easy thing to do. And it was, as I said, I spent a few years on this development um, in Rivian and 
It was a very difficult thing to do to say, to bring development to a place that didn't have it and say, how do we do this in a way that's really sustainable, that, that doesn't overwhelm the island, overwhelm the population, overwhelm the culture of the island? Um, and you, you know, this is sort of the same thing. It's, it's how, do you, how do you do that in a sustainable way? And you have to sort of set your priorities and then try to figure out um, how best to thread the needle on that. Um, and as I said, you're not going to make everybody happy. It just won't happen. Um, but if you can get, you know, the preponderance of the residents um, on board and, you know, there should be some, some thoughts into things like, you know, how do we mitigate the impact of some of these things as well? You know, what are, what are the things that will sort of offset maybe some of the impacts? And as I said, I, I, I developed uh, power plants, and um, we, we spent a lot of time talking to the town boards about how do we mitigate the impact of a power plant. Um, and there are ways to sort of think about doing that, you know. Um, so the impacts, there's a a bigger demand on fire services because the fire department had to learn all kinds of new things about how they dealt with with a power plant and all that but you know one of the things we we focused on is can we support that training can we pay for that training can we provide some additional equipment to the fire department in order to sort of offset that impact and i think that's kind of one of the big challenges here is uh how do you how do you balance all of that but at the same time, I, you know, with, with, the, with the infrastructure needs, and I went to the facilities planning session, mm -hmm. um, a lot of great ideas there. But you know, that's, there's a lot of money there, too. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know what the capacity of the overall base of taxpayers is to, to really afford that yeah. without bringing additional you know, economic development to the town. That's exactly what we've been that's, questioning is, you know, that's why what we've been trying to juggle. In yeah. 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 I, I think it's the fundamental question because um, you don't want to, you don't want to break the bank while you're trying to do these things. But at the same time, you also have, you know, I, I, I sort of think of, of the town as one of the things they have, which is the public works responsibility is really a public safety responsibility. And, so you have to pay attention to all those things, and you can't get them, let them get too far out of whack. Um, and it, I had the same issue when I ran the Department of Conservation and Recreation. I was a commissioner there for a while, and you know we have a tremendous state park system in this in this state. It's it's like the fifth or sixth largest state park system in the country, even though it's the 42nd largest state. So, I mean, it's a tremendous state park system, a lot of great natural resources that have been really well preserved. But on top of that, the Department of Conservation and Recreation was a mini transportation agency because it, it owned 500 miles of roads and 300 bridges and you know, 42 skating rinks and, you know, all of, the, all of those kinds of things. And all of those were really public safety related issues that you had to be able to deal with on a on a consistent basis and, and when you let them go you you increase the risk that you know somebody got hurt you know things got damaged because you know you couldn't afford to keep uh maintaining things so uh, i i think this town has that same challenge uh particularly because we have such a long coastline and it's a lot of the coastline is armored um and seawalls are not cheap to to keep in repair no, and if you don't keep them in repair they go bad sort of exponentially you know mm -hmm. they, they start to to go bad and then they go really bad you know um and, and that's a big challenge well i think we're gonna have to leave it here because i think we've exceeded yeah, yeah. just really one super stuff. quick logistical question you heard uh earlier that the previous gentleman was retired and mm -hmm. so i just wanted to ask about your commitment i mean are you working in boston now or yeah. No, I, I actually, the project I was working on, I've, I've left recently, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at other opportunities right now, but I, I, I don't see any problem committing the time to this okay. at this point. And, right. and, uh, and to, to follow up the question, you didn't ask me, but, uh, you know, presuming uh, this doesn't feel like you, you got run through a meat grinder, I would be interested <laughs> in, in actually continuing on in, in uh, uh, you know, 
uh, running for a uh, planning board position. Not everybody is willing to hold up a sign telling how great they are. <laughs> <laughs> Or even trying to find somebody else that will hold a sign to sit and says exactly. how great he is, <laughs> or they are. So I think it's a reasonable question to ask. Well, I thank you, Stephen, for your time and, and your interest in, in coming yes. down. And thank you. Thank you. It was great talking with you today. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. Okay, it's now, looks like 840. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Site Plan Administrative Review for the Salt Shed at 68 Captain Pierce Road. The applicants in town of Citrus DPW. Al, welcome. To the Good thing we didn't badmouth the DPW in the earlier one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Al, before we start, I want to compliment you and your department on how nice the paving job down in Greenbush and along uh, First Good. Parish Road looks. It's fabulous. Thanks. We tried to stretch it out so that people got really annoyed with the bumpy <laughs> road so that when the pain stopped, the pleasure felt even better. I, I did have to have some repair work done to my undercarriage in my car. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'd say Hollett Street could be added to that list, too. And a speed bump. Somewhere early in Gannett Road, about a three-foot speed bump would be appreciated. Yeah. Say, <laughs> down near your area? Yeah, about my area would yeah. be perfect. Then you'd hear, but then about too much, you'd say, could you take that out? There's all this bump, 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 bump. Yeah, or cars, cars landing on your lawn. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me this evening. Um, you have, of course, all the pre-work that I've sent you. I'll give you a couple words of introduction, and that'll be about it. Uh, as you probably have remembered from newspaper articles and other things, we, we have shifted or are shifting uh, to a straight salt method of uh, snow fighting. In the past, the town has had to mix salt and sand and the result of that is that it's not uh, sand mixed with salt gives some grit, but it's not nearly as effective at, at uh, cutting through the ice and the snow and creating the slush that can be plowed away. Um, and also what it does, it results in a tremendous amount of cleanup in the spring with uh, then the need to street sweep and everything that's swept up is considered a hazardous waste because it's been on the street, so we no longer can just dispose of it willy-nilly. It has to be dealt with as a... Uh, uh, waste that's logged, where's it going, uh, who's hauling it, and that sort of thing. So it's expensive to get rid of the sand uh, that we mix it and had to clean up. Uh, that aside, uh, the straight snow strategy has really been adopted across the state, and we're one of the last ones to really uh, be able to convert to that. In large part because uh, where we're located, uh, it's difficult in the middle of the winter when uh, we run out of salt, everyone runs out of salt. The limited number of trucks for delivering salt, we tend to be one of the last ones to get our uh, uh, replenishment loads of salt. So the solution that many towns like ours have gone through is to uh, uh, make sure that you have on hand more than one and a half snowstorms worth of salt, and that's why we're then going with a salt shed. Now we're putting that at the existing um, DPW yard located off of Captain Pierce Road down by the railroad crossing um, and as you can see it's on the property uh, in an area that is land, uh, was paved years ago um, and is used right now for parking. What we intend to do is to build this salt storage shed which I'll talk about in just a second and, and not to demolition the old building, but rather to clear it of salt and uh, get it cleaned up. And then we'll use that as an equipment storage shed so that the equipment that is currently stored outside, um, exposed to the elements, will be inside the shed, which will, in fact, improve the appearance of the area a bit. It'll look more orderly rather than having, as you, if you were drive by tonight, you'll see trucks parked every which way on the property. These trucks will be now be many of them will be parked inside the existing salt storage shed uh, where it will be uh, they'll be out of the elements and and uh, last longer so that's kind of the, the the whole general plan there the shed we're building uh, will cost um, about one hundred and forty thousand dollars uh, eighty eight thousand of that is for the um, steel and fabric structure which you've got as your picture uh, the remaining money is spent on foundation. Uh, the foundation will be an eight-foot-high concrete 
structure, uh, which is sturdy enough for the loaders to push against as they're scooping up the salt. And then the fabric building will be on top of that. Uh, it will be, the building will be underneath the uh, maximum height restrictions in the town of Situate. It's been verified by the building inspector that this would meet uh, that guideline of 39, less than 40 feet and everything else to do with eaves and such. Um, structure we are targeting to build here within the next six to eight to ten weeks. We want to get it up before winter. We have placed an order for the structure so that because the structure maker needs to design the foundation associated with this building, uh, we haven't gone forward yet to find a contractor to build the uh, foundation because we don't have the foundation design yet. Okay, thank you. Questions to the board? Okay. I'll start with Richard. <laughs> I was going to make a joke about having the design review committee look at the structure, but I won't. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> no, I really don't have any questions. I mean, it all seems pretty straightforward. So, um, no, no questions from me. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Huh? Um, Al, the structure is going to be quite far back from Captain Pierce, which I think is a real benefit. Uh, it looks like it's going to be closest to the, the built part of Tara Road in terms of visual impact on any residences. What's the sort of tree cover around that part of the site? <clears throat> the whole back side, what's called Tara Road, is a paper road. It's all wooded. And the paper road on the back is all wooded. It's completely wooded around this whole area. The only view of this will be uh, as you come down Curtis. You know, you'll look coming down the hill from Curtis yep. to the railroad tracks. Oh, I see, right. Uh, you'll you'll, see, you'll see, see the, the back side of the it. salt barn, and then you'll see this, which will be a little bit beyond it. Yep. Yep, good. Good. Because it's big. There's no question about yep. that. It's going to be big and white. Yeah. Uh, but good, thanks. It does dampen down after time. You know, it uh, the, it's kind the, of fade, fades yeah, out. Yeah, right. Yeah. We had talked about various colors, but the colors fade. It can fade, you know, and ugly like so. Sure. I have no questions. Oh, I guess I do. Is this lit? I mean, how do you how do you operate at night if you've got to load your trucks and do you know do various operations? The loader the loader provides the lighting. If there's any lighting inside, we haven't put plans for lighting in it right now, mm -hmm. um, uh, because the loader is what's lit. Okay. Thank you. It would, it would be a big white dirigible if it was lit, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be, uh, it would be <laughs> definitely prominent. We, we are well, thinking in the summer. Probably see it from out of space. Well, in the space. spring and summer, we might rent it out for parties. Yeah. Be nice. Weddings yeah. and such. I, I do have one other question. Um, you say that we're one of the last towns to go to the uh, uh, all salt uh, snow strategy. Um, is this salt um, some kind of special stuff that doesn't have a, a negative environmental impact? No, it's, it runs off? it's just dug out of the ground salt. Actually, it's salt that is uh, generally salt is supplied. Um, from settling ponds, it's ocean water that's been dehydrated oh, okay. and then scraped up and put on ships. The salt is almost free, the cost, and not free to us, but I mean the material is uh, produced with no energy, uh, just settling ponds. The primary cost for salt is uh, transportation. It's usually sea transportation from Mexico or, or uh, South America. Mm -hmm. And the price goes up or down with what those ships are used for. So the alternate uses uh, can tends to determine the price of salt. So but there's the, no increased environmental um, concerns about going from sand salt mixed to all salt. No, it's uh, as a matter of fact, um, the because the salt dissolves when it hits the ground, it, it goes away into the environment as opposed to the sand stays there, and then the sand has to be dealt with. And just because the sand then collects it all, you know, for the remainder in time that's there, it collects exhaust fumes and bits of oh, right, you know, sure. cadmium and all those other things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm just curious about the choice of the fabric roof. Um, is that is that the standard for these kinds of things, or is that uh, it seems a little unusual to me? Just probably because I haven't seen one before. Yeah, it's uh, it's economic consideration. The cost of doing this with a, a 
anything else would be much more expensive and it's what mass highway has been using now it's uh, what most highway departments are putting in across the state okay. um, we the the company we're using is the one that ends up the one that mass highway has been using as well so it's pretty standard what's the what's the uh, useful life any idea probably 10 to 12 years for the fabric okay the metal underneath is very substantial and so it'll have to be refabricated at some point. Okay. All right. Thank you. If Plus you're driving on the Mass Pike, um, I think the what's it called? Right there between like Natick and Framingham, there's yeah. a big facility there. I think they have a couple, don't they? If I'm not mistaken. No. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of those are they're they're like inverted cones. Well, yeah, there's those, but I thought they also had one. Yeah, that they had, they have those, but they, a lot of them are inverted cones yeah. because it, they use them for salt and sand because of the angle of repose. It's more effective to have them under as a cone as opposed to this type of a structure. Hmm. It's also having that much salt is pretty corrosive, so that's why you. you oh, the, yeah, the metal structure wouldn't last very no, long. No, wouldn't last. Yeah. Wouldn't last at all. Would, you know, would be like cars on Oceanside Drive. Right? <laughs> they rust out pretty quick. Do you all set, Eric? Yes, thank you. Okay. I'm all set. Do we have a motion? We, we do. Do. <laughs> do we have a motion here? I would like to make a motion. I move to approve a site plan for a salt shed at the Highway Barn 68 Captain Pierce Road, Situate, Massachusetts, for the Town of Situate, Department of Public Works. Sheet 1 of 1, dated July 18, 2012, with current revisions prepared by the Town of Situate, DPW, Engineering Division, subject to these following conditions. Number 1, the hours of construction on the site for the salt shed be 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., or dusk, whichever comes earlier on a weekday, and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., or dusk, whichever comes earlier on a Saturday. No construction is permitted on Sunday or a legal holiday. Number two, erosion control shall be provided on the plan. Number three, no storage of materials of any type shall be located between the shed and the wetlands. Number four, the drainage from the salt shed shall be directed so that no contaminated runoff directly enters the wetland. And that is the end of my Sir? motion. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Get your Thank you. Now, uh, speaking of the salt, and <clears throat> there was like a big design competition in Chelsea, because like Chelsea has the gigantic salt shed that all the ships come and then it's distributed. So anyway, I saw that they were doing something to try to make that salt facility look a little nicer because it's huge yeah it's huge yeah they and they drape it with the fabric similar to what we're using here before we've this is where our salt goes see just it's piles sitting outside oh, yeah. so uh, then it hardens up and becomes less usable and we have to break it up and we lose a lot and then of course it, it does uh, wash away so this will, this what this shed will keep us really a lot of salt out of the environment at one point in my life I worked for a company called Thompson a listener out of Brookline and they sure. came back out and one of my jobs was to come back up and take the salt sand and determine what the relative content percentages of each were. Really? Yeah. So I would I would go out and go to the various barns and just sit there and take yeah. the samples to make sure that it Did you do that by a liquid? By by wetting it or how did you yeah. yeah. You washed away the salt and let That's literally what you did. Yeah. Huh. Cool. A low tech solution to apparently a high tech problem. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank Super. you very much. Thank you, Al. Thanks, Al. Sorry. So the next item on the agenda is discuss vote language changes recommended by Town Council, VBOD, and WRPD. The zoning bylaw changes for the town meeting. Okay. I think we've got copies. Yep, yeah, we've got copies. Oh, good. There's minor changes to what was I think out. Yeah. Printed uh, out and reviewed on the email. While Laura's handing them out, let me just kind of give you an update, and then Laura can chip on and add the important elements and correct, those, so. and correct those that I get wrong. The email. Oh, so, all right. It's okay. some minor changes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm for Bill to go. Yeah, I think at our last meeting, we came back up and we had representatives from the WRC and we had um, Selectman Murray, I think, was here at the mm -hmm. meeting. And what we agreed is that we would go then to the WRC meeting, which we did, and we got input from both the WRC committee as well as, as Rick Murray on behalf of the Board of Selectmen of things that they would be expected to be looking at. 
As a follow-up to that, we then met with, Laura and I met with uh, two members of WRC, uh, John Clarkson, the chairman, and, and, and Becky. And we went through all of the concerns that they had and brought that language into, into our, our bylaw chain. So we then, we then changed that to the bylaw. We also came back out, and this is where Laura can really add a lot of the input, because a good portion of this is driven by sections or departments within the DEP and also from town council to make sure that from a legal standpoint the changes that we're proposing are, are, are valid from from the town's viewpoint on it all of that was then put into to, to the laura's word processing powers <laughs> and, and have come up with what we currently have uh which is the latest the latest language so i think let me but thanks wait. that really sums it up now yeah. i won't have to say anything <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, the intent was not, not to keep that anything. and make that, but I just. No, and, and again, the process, if we approve this, we still have, this is, would be voted at town meeting, yeah. special town meeting. Yeah, we still have to hold the public hearing process. Okay. So we would do that. Um, That's going to be October 11th, but what you're voting on tonight is basically to run a legal ad and to really get a little bit more serious about it. Okay. Um, now, at, at we what, weren't serious about it before, but <laughs> at what point in the process does this get approved by the AG's office? After town meeting. After, After town, town meeting. meeting. So it gets voted. It goes through the, 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 the vetting process, if you would. So we go through the advisory, the selectmen, and all the very public hearing for the planning board. At that point, it then has a recommendation to go to, with, or go to town meeting with recommendations. It then gets voted by town meeting, up or down, and if it gets voted up, then in effect the attorney general then goes through and, and looks at it. And this is something that should be very similar to what a lot of other towns are doing because it really is pretty much of a cookbook that DEP tells you, like, take. It's, it's been driven you know, by, by the state to begin with. Yeah, so yeah, like three pounds of this and two pounds of that and mix it all together and you get by law. So, um, what what uh, we talked about when Bill and I met with with John Clarkson and Becky from Water Resources the other night, one of the things we talked about was the need for some definitions because there's some terms in here that are some of them you want definitions because they're really important, others just because you've just never heard these words put together before and you, know, you wonder what does it exactly mean. So things like um, Hazardous material, hazardous waste, uh, zone A, zone two, those are some of the, the important type of ones. Um, treatment works, utility works, um, non sanitary wastewater, those are some of the, the, you know, what exactly does that mean definitions. And, and these are the approved definitions from a state agency that we've, that have already been passed on? Yeah, these came from a model groundwater bylaw that DEP had okay. that John Clarkson had with him, and um, I looked it up on the internet and seen one of the most recent things they had. So, um, so all those definitions were were put in the first part of this. Um, they would be put in an alphabetical order with the other definitions in the bylaw, so they just be kind of slipped in to what we have. Um, the findings. Rick Murray had a concern that we were taking too much out of the findings and possibly weakening it, so we kind of reoriented the findings a little bit and um, everything that was in there before is still in there with just the additional information that DEP wanted on the wells. Um, town Council had some changes, um, for instance, when we talk about a um, a map, you know, the Water Resource Protection District map. After we we mentioned who the engineer is, they wanted the word and uh, before the date, so we we put that in there. Um, there are a couple of language changes in these use and activity regulations on page three. Um, water resources wanted to add salvage operations into the things that are prohibited throughout the whole water resource protection district and that wasn't a problem for DEP, so that's in there. Um, then in the zone A we have uh, I think it's the zone two we 
talk about um, emergency uh, generators as an exception to one of the places where you can have you know liquid propane and liquid fuels and um, they wanted to put in the words on site so we added that <coughs> 15 16 oh, here it is. Yeah. paragraph so, six, six, uh, six yeah six paragraph B and then they had the question on 15 and 16 Page four. Uh, we talked about manure, and um, they wanted the manure storage to be 100 feet away from a water body because they thought, well, you know, it doesn't really make sense to prohibit animals from feeding, grazing, you know, etc. Within 100 feet of Old Oak and Bucket Pond or a tributary, if you're going to be able to store the manure within 100 feet. So we added the manure to one of the things that's got to be kept away. Um, and that's that's basically it. We we had some more conversations about the swimming and boating in Old Oak and Bucket Pond. It turns out that those things are things that the state has regulations about, and they want the water the yeah, the water commissioners who are the selectmen, if there's going to be a local regulation, those are the people that, that develop the regulation and adopt it. Um, doesn't have to be a general bylaw, it doesn't have to be in this bylaw. You know, having them them adopt it is fine. And they don't even really have to adopt it because the police and the water department can enforce that. So, and um, they're going to put up appropriate signage. They're going to put up signage. And they're also working on the fact that the state um, stocks those ponds with some kind of fish, and um, you know what do we do? You know maybe we don't want to prohibit people from fishing just from going out on a boat or in the pond swimming. You know we don't want them to do that, but standing there and you know casting a rod and fishing is is like a different mm. kind of a thing. I hope so. <laughs> I've fished there all my life. <laughs> I, know, I, just, I see people out there from yeah, time to absolutely. time with the waders on you. Yeah. So, uh, so in those ponds for 60 some odd years now. <laughs> what kind of fish do they stock it with? I don't know what they stock it with, Laura, honestly, but there's lots of sunfish. There's, uh, there's the little catfish that they call, uh, uh, what do they call them? Anyway, little black catfish that you can catch. There's pickerel. Um, I've caught pickerel in, in both Greenbush and Hack Factory, you know, decent size. Um, they may stock them with bass. I mean, it would be a good environment for, for bass. I know when there was a stream, instead of the reservoir um, connecting the two ponds, they used to stock that with trout. That was years and years ago. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, so that's where we are. So I think what we really are looking for is, is your vote to uh, you know, advertise for the, for the public hearing and um, you know, then we're fine, and this is the this is the draft that we're working with. This is the one that will be posted for the public hearing, um, and I think we're ready to go. If anybody wants to look at town council's comments, I printed those out. Um, if anyone would like to look over it in more detail, and then you know you can vote like contingent on that. You know, by all means. Well, I think Coaster, we got to get it to the printer. We, we have to get it to the printer next week. We're, we're fine you know, for a couple days if somebody wants to take it over the weekend and spend like a couple of really intensive hours <laughs> <laughs> with zoning. But then it would then have to come back up and have to go to DEP to make sure the change is acceptable to them and then it goes to town council or to, at the same time, but we need those two, just two groups to sign off on it. Whatever changes. Yeah, well, I, I think we have all the sign offs from DEP, but I guess I'd like in your motion to just include if there are any other changes DEP wants to make, that those would be, um, those would be acceptable. And whatever, if they do want something, I'll circulate it around among you. Okay. I think I've spent I, more I time reading this that. bylaw. <laughs> I don't know if we can do that. Okay. Well, that's, that's I don't think okay. we can vote something we don't know. Okay. Okay. That's okay. It's 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 fine with me if you want to just vote it as well, it is. In a public hearing, that's our opportunity to amend it or change it yeah. at that yeah. point. So well, yeah, and I certainly fine. trust all the work that's been done by the members on this board. 
I've, I've spent more time reading 520 than I think I've ever wanted to yeah. do. I, I'm good with it, so I've reviewed it. You know, there's several drafts of it now, and it sounds good. Good. Any other comments? Motion? Do we have a motion for that one? I don't think we did do a motion for that one. We. Yeah, sometimes the motion here will have to wing. Okay, okay, Richard, let's 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 see you let's see you do this. I don't know if I can do that. Well, in the beginning, <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> well, you had mentioned you also wanted the if the changes for DEP in the motion. No, we're we not going to do that. Oh, do that. okay. Well, I move that we vote uh, to approve the changes to W um, <clears throat> RPD district and bylaw dated nine thirteen twenty twelve. Um, for advertise for the hearing. Yeah, yep. yeah, I guess yep. for advertising in the, the Mariner for the public hearing. Second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you all. Okay, anything else before we adjourn? Lord <laughs> 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 No, they, well, um, I think maybe we, we should vote the other one. We also, are going to advertise the the um, changes to the village business overlay district. Okay. I was wondering about that. Yeah. So sure. if you'd like to vote that one also, um, you just did such a good vote, such a good motion on the water resource, you know, you just maybe could do the same thing on that one. That one, there haven't been any changes in the language since the changes the town council made that we distributed um, back in August. So we're going to, motion is going to move the latest version of the Updated uh, overlay district for publication. Yeah. So moved. <laughs> I, have a, I got a second. second. All those in favor? Hi. Aye. Aye. That worked out. Okay. Good. Anything else we need to vote? Well, not right now. We're willing. <laughs> yeah. What else we need is a cause. Okay, the next item on the agenda is um, are you Treasure Island? Are you. Uh, oh. Are you both? I love okay. that name, Treasure Island. It's like, it makes yeah. me think of um, like going to Vegas. The next yes. item on the agenda is a form A plan for 530 Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Applicants are Buzzy, Investment Trust. Are you representing them? Why don't you? Yes, I am. Talk to us what you. That's a, uh, this is a, uh, uh, Landcourt Petitioner's plan. Not that one. Not this is the second one. Okay. I have order here. Out of order, yes, out of order. <laughs> oh, okay. Dan and I can share. We'll Are we doing Treasure Island? Yeah. Okay. If you don't have it. This one right Okay. Is this the one with a change on it? This is the one. Oh, okay. This slot's yeah, on They're looking at Treasure Island. Yeah. I don't think this is. That's Treasure yeah, Island. This is Treasure I, I, Island. I have that. Okay. You, you and I haven't got the land for it. What we're going to do is add 17. They're going to take 17 out of the big parcel. 15 is now 14. House because. Oh. He's got a garage here and he wants to go oh, the same amount of house. Oh, Sounds okay. certainly reasonable to me. Pardon? Said so it sounds reasonable to me. You'd want to have your garage on your land. Okay. Seven. Where's, where's 14? Fourteen? Fourteen. Line going right through it. Yep. Yeah. It's the one with the house right. on. One at a time. Okay, this one. Okay. That's the original. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that also says. Yeah. Okay. So, so those. This is, this is um, it says 15 on this plan, but we have new plans. It's oh, okay. 15. I see. Okay. So, Laura, we. Are, you reviewed it and your comments are? Um, well, there are a couple little glitches. The access isn't shown, but there is a reference to the land court plan that does show the access. So I think it's, you know, it's there's a uh, paper trail that you can follow to find the access on it. Um, if there's ever a subdivision up here, I think you, you know, you are going to need more information on the access, but it's not creating any new buildable lots, so I don't think ask access is a major issue. It's just increasing an existing lot. By yeah, it's just adding the lot with a garage onto the lot with a house. Yeah, right. The, or the parcel. The with house the that's there is the lot's being expanded for the garage. Right. So it was originally two separate parcels. Pardon? It was originally two separate lots. 
I didn't even know there was a balance. Just a slot on the balance. I didn't know. I thought that was yeah, like to down. the glades, isn't it? Well, yeah. Was, well, you know, they, they no. start with lot one. Not really. This is the 14th lot. Because I'm looking, I'm looking here. The glades goes out, the, goes out right. this road. So right. this is right so here. Yeah, but it's on, it's on this end of Bailey's so Collier. This is the, this is the uh, call here. This, this is, goes out to the grip yeah. Line yeah. Line. So yeah. So this is mine it right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Three, Mine at Beach. So on and so forth. So well, that's where the house out was. That was the 14th lot out of this entire case, you know, which includes land over Yeah, I didn't realize that there were houses out there either. The I always figured that was part of the golf course. The next one of the 18th. So yeah, or not, or just Marsh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just merely to expand right. the lot to include yeah. the garage area? Right. right. Yeah. So I guess we're... The garage is existing and they want to put it together. He just wants the garage to go to be on the same line as the house. Sure. Which makes sense. Yeah. Okay, do I have a motion? Yeah. Um, here's a motion. There is a motion. <laughs> so it's where the drive is, so the road is going to be over on this side. Mm -hmm. so, I didn't know there were houses out there, Paul. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there were houses out there, and I've lived in mine for 25 this, years. This is the main one, then they got three or four small ones yeah. right here. This is the garage. Is the yeah. Now, are these uh, pertinent to the golf course? No, it's separate ownership. This yeah. is the, the uh, clubhouse is right over here. Right, right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is the main one. Mm -hmm. This is the main one. Interesting. I mean, it's beautiful out there. How do, you, how do you actually get to it? Is it through the golf course driveway? Yeah, the parking lot, yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Got to go down there and take a look one of these days. <laughs> It's a private way. Pretty piece of property. I'm sure it is. Well, <laughs> you're in the planning board. You can Probably go. Probably well guarded. You can go anywhere you want. Oh, okay. Right. So I got a motion and well, a second. Yeah. Any other discussion? Oh, oh I was waiting for the discussion okay. to complete. So. so I'm waiting for a motion. Okay. I move to endorse, as approved under subdivision control law, not required, a plan of land court plan 7532N for Treasure Island in Situate, Massachusetts, showing a division of the remainder of lot C as shown on land court plan 7532H, as the plan is not a subdivision as a, uh, <clears throat> uh, as a piece of land shown on lot 17 is being added to house number 34, shown as lot 14, right. and is a conveyance or change in lot line which does not alter the existing frontage as required under the situate zoning bylaw. The plan was prepared by Ross Engineering Com Company Incorporated for applicant Dennis J. Dilley and owner Treasure Island Limited Liability Corporation dated May 28th, 2012. Do you have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is that right? Paul? Dilly? Dilly? How do you pronounce that? Dilly? Is that right? So the next Dilly? one is, is 530 Chief Justice Christian Island. I'm excited about this one because I did not know that Elizabeth Taylor was living in Situate. <laughs> did you see one of the uh, parcels that was... Not, not Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> She's not living anywhere at the moment. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Excuse me. <laughs> Maybe she just planted there. She, yeah, really. <laughs> you could say this is where her roots were. <laughs> you could. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't. Yeah, right. Okay, what are you doing here, Paul? This is the um, this is the land court petitioners plan or the subdivision plan for the uh, Deer Common uh, flexible open space development that was approved by the board under a special permit and subsequent to the approval we filed this plan with the land court to have them approve the lots um, nothing has changed as far as the lots the only change was a minor change in what they did with the whole hold the drill hole here instead of a land court disc it was further down on one of the lots. There's three sheets in here. And what that did was it changed the area of lot 29, which is the open space. I think it's about 260 square feet less. But everything's relative. Um, again, nothing changed in the lots. There, there's no impact on your special permit. This plan will go to the land court, and what they do is to draw up the final decree plan from which the lots would be conveyed out. And when they're conveyed out, there'd be a... Um, a uh, new certificate of title which will reference the special permit that has any and all conditions on it for the people living in any one of these 12 lots. Laura? There was a question about whether the conditions of the um, subdivision should be on this plan, but um, Paul assures us that they're going to be on the certificate of title, on the land court certificate, so um, it seems like that's covered. and. There was a little lot change, a little line change, but it had to do with how the survey was, was tied in. It's tied into a different monument than the original one. So there 
a few square feet here and there that, that this differs from the subdivision plan, but um, it's nothing substantial, so I don't see any problem. No glitches? No glitches. Motions? Motions. Yep. And they have until 2014, is that correct, based on what you were telling me? Yeah, I think they have at least until 2014, depending on how you read Governor Patrick's uh, Extension Act. Yeah, the Extension Act was just approved for another two years. Yeah. yeah, so it was 2012, so now it's 2014. All right, I move to endorse as approved under the subdivision control law not required a plan of land court plan 18670G in situate mass showing a division of lot one as shown on land court plan 18670C for 530 Chief Justice Cushing Highway as the plan is endorsed as a land court subdivision plan. Plan prepared by Ross Engineering Company for the applicant owner Frederick C. Uh, Zimonia, Trustee Business Investment Trust, dated July 23rd, 2012, consisting of sheets one through three. No second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank I'll you. sign those tonight and you can pick them up in the morning. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. You want any of these or plans? I think uh, I, I put them in a pile. I, I think no, I have know. them right here. So no, we need to separate out the three for the Treasure Island. Well, we have the three for the Treasure Island three. here. Oh, they are. Yeah. Right. yeah. Don't worry about the the Treasure Islands can get can get dumped because we don't need those because they need to change. Okay. Okay. And you no, need no, they and have I have the new ones. We they just gave them the new ones. Oh, you got them. I've got them. You've got yeah. them. Okay, yeah. so we can dump them. Yeah, you can dump okay. them. Okay. Five thirty is good. Um, we need three 530s. Here's, here's one 530. Here's one. I know this is. Do you just a G sign for the town? Captain Pierce Road. This is 530. This is 530. You know, you don't have a timetable. I shouldn't say they didn't tell you a timetable. I'm just curious as when they're thinking. No, there's been a big uh, family dispute on, um, you know, among the family that, that um, inherited this property, and they're trying to work that out. Mm. So it could be a while. Yeah. We won't see houses going up in the next month. <laughs> Not next month. <laughs> Maybe the month after. Okay. So moving along. Next item is accounting. We have bills. Lots of bills. Oh, lots of bills. Do I need my glasses for that? <laughs> While we're getting that organized, uh, I don't know if any of you saw, but uh, the the ice house is in the process of putting up their yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Look, looks pretty good. Or is that picture around? Yeah. It looks very nice. Richard has them on his screen here. Very oh, shimmy. Richard's way ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> he's changed his screensaver because he's so impressed with that, <laughs> that structure. Very the fact of the matter is we're going to see if we can talk to people in Cohasset to see if they would uh, be interested in putting the similar thing arrangement on their ice house. No, don't do we, we want do we, do we get a commission? A royalty? <laughs> I, well, I, I just was just looking for, you know, maybe an account at Starbucks. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got my attention. Uh, oh, there's Bob. I see. I can't see. <laughs> All right. Um, I move that we pay $108.54 to the community newspaper uh, company for the legal ad in the Situate Mariner for the accessory dwelling for permit for 33 Garden Road. Oh, okay. And I. In case you don't know, Garden Road is coming back. They filed again. Right, next uh, meeting. Next meeting. Mm -hmm. And oh, no, not next meeting, I'm sorry. No, not next meeting. Oh, no, yeah, they, well, they have they're in the process of? up with Fifth Avenue. Third Avenue. Third Avenue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I also move that we approve $26.25 to the New Water Resources, uh, or to, I'm sorry, uh, Weston Graphics for the New Water Resources Protection District map, Fall 2012 Special Town Meeting. I move that we approve. Seventy dollars to uh, Western Graphics for the maps for the water supply protection zones for the new water resource protection district for special town meeting fall 2012 articles. I move that we pay fifty-seven dollars and fifty cents to Chessia Consulting for assistance with data uh, uh, for the selectmen's meeting and the settlement agreement with Walnut Tree Hill. I move that we pay fifteen dollars to Image Resolutions for the new water resources protection district maps for the special town fall meeting 2012 articles. And that's what I have for accounting. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We also have minutes for approval. So we have the planning board minutes for August 23rd, 2012. 
I move that we approve them, as well as the minutes for August 9th, 2012. I think that's just those two, right, Karen? Okay. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> that brings us to meeting dates in November or December. Right. Do you have those dates? Yeah. Um, right now you are posted for um, November 8th, which is a Thursday. You'll be posted for November 13th, which is a town meeting. And then you'll be, you will be posted for November 20th, which is Tuesday the week before Thanksgiving, and then December 13th. Right now we don't have a second meeting in December yet. Um, so the question is, do you want to have a second meeting or do you not agree with any of the other dates in November? Do you want to meet twice in November and twice in December? It might depend on what the pressures on the uh, agenda are, you know, if there's a lot of business to be done we might have we, we might want to meet more well frequently can you schedule it and then we could always cancel if there was not nothing on the agenda I mean, that seems reasonable mm -hmm. so the way we are so if I understand it so our normal meeting would be the 8th right. and then we've got a meeting on the 13th because that's going to be for town meeting. town meeting okay and then we would meet on the 20th right. and that would be the second meeting of the month that would be the second meeting of the month yeah. okay and that and that would be on a Tuesday because Thanksgiving's on Thursday. Oh, okay. It's that same week as yeah. Thanksgiving. I see. Yeah. I'm not opposed to coming back up, meeting on the 8th, having a meeting on the 13th, and holding the 20th if we need it. And if we don't need it, then not have it. Okay. Okay. So then we won't meet between the, um, you said the second one would be the 8th in November? So we meet on the 8th of November. And then we won't meet again meeting. until yeah, December. We'll have town meeting. Yeah. And then we wouldn't yeah. meet until December. Well, can we ask you to think about the 20th in case we... No, we we'll, put a, we'll put it on it, and if we okay. need it, then we'll use it. If, otherwise, we won't. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. right. I mean, all things being equal. I mean, if, if we need, you know, it's a form A or something, and, and the days, the time passes, then I'm not opposed to having a, you know, brief meeting to, to do it. But. Mm -hmm. And then December, Karen, what was the date? Right now, we have December 13th. 13th. It's your second Thursday. Yeah. And then on, uh, Christmas falls on what, I think, is it Tuesday? Tuesday. Right, so it'd be the 27th would so be two meet, days after Christmas. Meet, yeah, you don't want to meet on the 26th, one day after Christmas. So we could either meet a week after the 13th, December 20th, or, I mean, we could go with that and see if we need the meeting. Yeah, that's fine. I, I think one thing that will affect it is if you want to do articles for spring town meeting right in that time frame is usually when we start either advertising or you know there's usually some pretty major work that has to go on right about that time of year so um, what's the week after Christmas is there a date after Christmas like between Christmas and New Year's that's what she was saying was the well, Christmas, do you I have a date no I don't okay what about meeting no. like twice earlier, you know, like the 6th yeah. six, and the six 20th and the, or something? Yeah, or the 6th and the 20th or the 6th and the 13th would work out better, I think. Yeah. Then. So meet 1st and 3rd instead of 2nd and 4th. Like the s or 1st and 2nd. 1st and 2nd, right. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. The 13th, yeah, yeah. 6th and the 20th. Oh, the, uh, look, it's a calendar. Might be good. The 6th and the 20th might be good. I think that's fine, yeah. That's yeah, two weeks in between. That's fine, especially if we skip uh, the, the second meeting in November. What about the 13th instead of the 20th? Yeah, the 6th and the 13th meet I, two weeks in a row. I think the thing that's hard is then it's a long time before the next meeting, and um, yeah. there's this kind of rhythm to these these applications. Um, I about? mean, we, we can, yeah, I guess I, I that's just no my. <laughs> I have no problems with the 6th and the 20th, but. Or you could do like the 6th and the 18th or something like that. Well, it's just that every yeah, time the 18th we would be try a, to have a meeting here on a Tuesday night, we have to. To go we somewhere else? probably have to meet somewhere else. And yeah. we may have to meet somewhere else on the 20th um, because the ZBA usually meets the third. I, I can't help. I can't help but note that we could we could have our meeting at, at Richard's house for his annual Christmas party. <laughs> I was already thinking about yes. that. Actually. Good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you feel if you're jumping out a little bit. I don't know how you feel. January we have the 10th and the 24th, and February the second and fourth is the 14th and the 28th. I don't know if you 
How romantic. Sure. Valentine's Day? Sure. <laughs> so I guess the 13th and the 20th? Is that of, of November or December? December. Okay. So those two That's back to back? Or the 6th and the 20th? Yeah, I, I think that the 20th is, a, is an important one. Okay, so, um, so we'll go 6 and 20? 6 and 20 yeah, seems good to me. Okay. And then if we don't get the second meeting in November, the 6th will be a little closer to the 13th. Yeah, it makes yeah. it easier for us to cancel the second one in November. Like that, right. Do we have January already scheduled? Well, it would be the second and fourth would be the 10th and the 24th. I haven't sent that out yet. Oh, okay. Are we all set on that? Okay. And then, like you can you said, send out an email on, to that effect so that I can mark it down on my calendar? Yeah, I will. I'll send out okay. an email on Tuesday. Too, yeah, so if you're curious through January, that'd be good. Okay. okay. Wouldn't. So it's the 8th and 20th of November that we're counting up. Yep, 8th and the 20th of November and the 6th and the 20th yeah, of December. Okay, great. And if we're doing the 2nd and the 3rd or 4th in February, it, to me, it doesn't fall on the 14th. You'd have the 7th and the 21st. Okay, maybe I missed the Because um, you'd have the 7th. Oh. Oh, well, that's actually the 1st. Yeah, first, you're right. Why. You're right. I think you're good. Yeah. First is a Friday, then, right? Yeah, you're correct. So, yeah, I'm just so, looking at the right. Thursday. You're right. Well, we could do the 7th and the 21st. <laughs> We just don't want to add any more days to January. I would, I would do the 7th and the 21st, I think. Or February. In February, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's going to mean probably the 21st we'll either meet in our office or somewhere mm -hmm. other than here. But WPA building is, is, is a good choice. Yeah. Right, Bob? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> meet in the salt shed. Yeah, we could meet in the salt <laughs> shed. The Maritime oh, Center is nice that time of year. Or the Gar Hall is cool. Yeah, the yeah. GAR Hall is heat, but that's, that's, yeah, that's a, a great I space. was being a little, little personal. That's a lot of heat you know, just for us little group, our little group. Yeah. What about the, um, is the um, Marine Center? Maritime Center. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, the Maritime Center over here? Pier 44. They have heat in Not the winter. Pier 44, the Maritime the, Center. Mm -hmm. Pier 44 Community well. building. Community yeah, Center. Library. Yeah. That's good because they also got to get out of there by 9. Library is good. That's always good. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. If you want to do the library, you should call, you know, call quickly. Call, next week call on Monday so or Tuesday. First. Okay. okay. So the next item is liaison reports. I had the distinct honor of sitting through design review, looking at the sign for uh, the Moran property. Yeah, and I think. The design review suggested that they have a uh, sign that has the pillars on the side. They come up to, and then you have the signs going across. There would be something on the top that uniquely identifies the hatch building. Mm -hmm. And then they would have on a rotating basis the cross signs for the various tenants that they have. They looked at the possibility of putting it at different locations. So if you drive by the rotary now, <laughs> yeah. you'll see their, their existing sign, and then you'll see back farther from the road is, is another sign and that's they're looking at that as, as a possible location and relative height on it it's not bad actually i mean it's, it's actually better i yeah. think because i mean when i come down 123 or into the rotary i see it i mean yeah. it's line of sight yeah. and, and they had quite a bit of discussion i think that the way it worked out was our design review is going to give them some ideas some signs that they think would do it and they're going to work up and meet with design review again before they come in with us and so it was a pretty, pretty discuss, uh, interesting discussion. I think we also talked about putting in some language that um, would come back up and allow them to come back up and put in existing the, the signs they need for either direction or for handicap parking in that. Mm -hmm. So the, this, the, the modification we'd, we'd, we'd make to the, the special permit would be, one would be to approve the sign, the signage that they're, they're coming up with, and then the second is some general words that brings them back into conform, allows them to be in conformance with required signage uh, and they're going to work on that too so. sounds good the rest of the time I spent doing uh, bylaw 520 
<laughs> you were doing that like under the table? <laughs> I'm not, not sure, but now that we're down to a single version of it, I can probably get 30 or 40 more miles per gallon in my car. Oh, good. Instead of carrying around a lot of different versions. So, any other reports? Uh, town plan report? Okay, uh, I've got a couple of things. Um, first of all, I think um, I was very excited to hear that somebody's going to be helping me with grants. That'll be really <laughs> a great thing. Um, I was looking out for you. That's great. Um, just in case you, you don't know, I do write the elevation grants. We're still involved with that whole program. And I did also write a grant for um, one of the community preservation open space purchases. Um, the, um, is it the Crosby property? Yeah, the, the Crosby property, which we had to resubmit, but you had to you know, write it all over again and pull the maps together all over again and, and all of that. And, um, you know, grants, for lack of a better word, they're a little bit of a crapshoot. You just don't know, you know, what's going to come back. But I also, um, did I mention that with this whole Green Communities, we also got 163000 for that. And you all wouldn't have seen that. Tricia would see it and Al would see it, but it wouldn't, you know, this wouldn't be one that you would even really, you know, be too aware of. Um, so I also, you know, it's kind of um, timely to talk about grants because MAPC has given out some information about the same grant that we tried to get last year for the Economic Development Committee, which is a $30,000 grant to help them. Um, it would supplement their their budget that, you know, five, I think they, they got up to $9,000 in their budget, which I don't think they have plans on exactly how they're going to use it yet, but the plan last year was to get some services from MAPC to do an economic development study. So I'm imagining, but I definitely want to check with you all, that you want me to kind of go down that same path again. Um, so you might want to just pass that out. That's some general information from MAPC um, about that grant. And one of the things that happened uh, with the last application was we got involved with a project with Marshfield and Duxbury on climate change and sea level rise modeling and that kind of thing. It was a good project. We got some good education pieces out of it. But a problem was that since we got that grant from MAPC, we were precluded from getting other DLTA grants from them. And if I had known that, you know, I think it would have made the decision process maybe a little bit different whether or not we did that or not because there are other agencies that are doing that sea level rise modeling and I think we didn't absolutely have to do that. But that's what we did. That's, you know, what Tricia wanted to do. and. Anyway, that was last year. This year, um, based on my conversations with them, we should have a good shot at getting this money for the economic development study. Great. Terrific. So just keep my fingers crossed on that one, and I hope you'll keep your fingers crossed on it. Um, next meeting, the uh, new developer at the Riverway, he's, he's a new member of the family that's been developing it, is going to come in and give his progress report. We notified the, the condominium owners so that if they're interested in finding out what's going on with the whole progress of that development, they can come and listen in on that. Um, hopefully that won't make things like contentious or difficult or anything. I don't think it should because I think this is really positive stuff talking about, um, you know, how he's going to finish things up. Um, he wants to present everything in a very positive way because he just seems to be that kind of person. So, is there a fair amount of annoyance down there on the part of the existing owners? Not that I've heard. Did you hear anything? No, uh, I just, I just okay. was wondering. No, um, I think they may not be aware of some things, like what's supposed to happen with a walkway to the cemetery and what's supposed to happen out at the front of the property. So this would be a good, a good chance for them to find out. But I think that, you know, you can, you know, put a good spin on all that. Mm -hmm. And if you need me to, I'm happy to help with that. 
I think it's written in the bylaw, or not the bylaw, but there's like a requirement for a Starbucks out front, I believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with a cute little awning. Yeah. and yeah. I believe that's just over the Marshfield line. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. um, um, spring town meeting um, seems like it's a long way away because we haven't gotten through fall town meeting, but there are a couple of things that I think we, you know, you might want to think about. Neil Duggan brought to us that in the uh, flexible open space bylaw, he wants a little tweak in there to address lot width as something that can be modified when you, that's, that's the one where you modify all the lot sizes as long as you can do everything at the initial density. And he wants to see a reference to lot width in there, which I think is like a one word change. Um, I wasn't sure, and if you want to talk about it now or think about it and talk about it later, if you want to keep um, the ability to have an accessory dwelling in a separate structure in that R3 district where everything tends to be pretty, pretty close together mm -hmm. or, or not, um, maybe that's something you know, to think about and then come back and revisit in a couple weeks. I, I like that idea of yeah, modifying too. that. Yeah. That would solve the issue. I, I don't think you necessarily want to preclude it completely, but mm. but that would um, visually would. So we were kind of. Considering that I, 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 I live in the R3 district and I'm, I'm told my, my house has an accessory dwelling permit existing, hmm. I need to find out. Hmm. But then it wouldn't pre. You could still have an accessory dwelling as long as it was added on. I mean, attached, a, attached yeah. uh, and not yeah. completely separate. Yeah, I, I like that idea a lot. I think we should propose that. I don't see any. I mean, we had the yeah. we had the case in point at the last right. yeah. meeting, so right. I think that was the way that to solve it. And it seemed like the neighbors were supportive of going that direction anyway. It <clears> seems <throat> to make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like if you have any other thoughts about things that you know you've been thinking about for a while or thinking about for the last half hour or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> for 10 um, years. Um, you know, this is a good time to bring them forward, you know. Particularly we, we if they're can, one word ads or a couple of word yeah. changes. Oh, one word ones are great, but they don't have to be. <laughs> so, um, um, a couple of things on these uh, stormwater permits. Uh, up at Hadley and Gannett Road on the southeast corner, there's, uh, there's a property that has, it's not right on the corner, it's the, one, the very next one going down Hadley. There's a, like a little garage that sort of sits by itself, and then there's a house a little ways away from the garage. Left hand side as they go down? Yeah. Across from the golf And the red house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, they're going to be building a house there, and they need a stormwater permit. It's a pretty flat lot. It's one that falls in the... Um, they just put a septic yeah. system in there. Well, uh, I think they're maybe they're getting sewer. I'm not sure if sewer is going up that high. I don't know what what's going on there, but somehow they're they're putting a house in there. Um, so that one falls within my ability to approve it. If you guys, you know, want to see that one or weigh in on it or whatever, you want me to send around whatever I. Yeah, I would mind. I would mind seeing the application. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, um, 87 Maple Street, uh, I sent some information around about this one. It's a lot that's way, way down a long, long dirt drive. It's actually like a quarter to half mile long driveway that goes off of Maple right near where Maple and Grove come together. He's talking with his attorney about whether he really needs to come in for a stormwater permit or not. So I'll keep you posted. That was the one that they started clearing and doing some stuff. And then there was no permits or anything. The neighbors well, complained, he seems to right? have cleared acres of land back there. And he, <laughs> he had a friend. He lives in Tewksbury, and he had a friend who I think just fell in love with his, you know, with his backhoe and <laughs> started, <laughs> uh, started just clearing like that. And um, yeah, so anyway, so we'll see what's, what's going to happen with that. Um, um, the floodplain, um, now the zoning board is, is looking at all the floodplain special permits. Um, I don't know if, if you folks want to weigh in on any of those, make any comments or not. There's one for um, 
Uh, it's a little 6,000 square foot lot on Foam Road. Um, you know, it's one of those lots they're going to have to determine is not subject to flooding. Um, so maybe you want to stay out of the controversy <laughs> on that one, but just so you know that one's going on. Yeah. Okay. And then um, 349 Hadley Road, which was that um, 4A plan on the, is that the one with Hood Road? Um, yes. Yeah, um, the surveyor just wanted to put a note on the plan that referred to the date of the actual survey. It was something for land court. It do didn't seem to really need another endorsement, but if you want the note, you know, I can pass this out so you can see the note, or if you don't care, that's, that's good. Well, if they want so. it, I, we can, I, I can look at it and then sign it. Mm -hmm. He didn't, no, he, he didn't really want to do another plan. He just wanted to add on the note. So if that's, if that's okay, if you want him to, we can get him to do the plan, but. Whatever the board wants. It sounds well, minor enough to I me. Don't. First of all, what was the note? I mean, is it just. Okay, the note, it's something that Landcourt wanted that he hadn't put on there yet. He's, it says, I certify that this actual survey was made on the ground in accordance with the Landcourt instructions of 1989 on or between March 29th, 2002, and July 9th, 2012, and that the monuments controlling Landcourt Plan 12503A are in the ground and usable as of this date. So, you Typical know, I think it's stuff that we Yeah, that, that's, yeah that's, that's not a big deal. That's fine. It's administrative. Do we need to formally vote to add that to the plan? I, I don't think if it's a matter like that, I don't think we do. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, if you want to, I, I don't want to say that you don't. But since we're here, we can vote it. Stan. I mean, I, I, I'm not opposed to voting it. That way there, there's, okay. there's, there's an audit trail going back. Sure. I, I move okay. that we approve that addition of that note. Okay. And I have a second from Richard. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's easy. I don't easy. think we need to, but then we're covered. Yeah, I think that consent puts an audit trail for it. Sure. Okay, um, and and uh, that's it. Laura, um, speaking of land subject to flooding, is the Dory matter still alive, so to speak? Yeah, it went up to the appeals court, and um, it's it's kind of like lingering there. Okay, because we haven't heard much about it for a while, but I didn't hear any resolution of it either. On the other hand. No, it, it got appealed to the appeals court when yeah. you know the town won. She wasn't happy. So, yeah. I mean, it could still go either way. I, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. We got one item before we get to the recommendation. We I've got a letter I've passed around from Patricia, uh, indicating that they are creating a public facilities master plan steering committee, of which we'll have 15 members eight appointed by the selectmen and eight recommended by appointment by other boards and committees, which we are one of. Uh, and that would put our person as a member of that committee, uh, assume that the selectmen agree. And, and it talks about the, what the proposed charge is. Uh, uh, so I think we should have a member of this board on that committee. And what I'd like to do is suggest that Bob be our member on that committee. I don't know whether that fits into your time or your schedule or your. Oh, not really. What about one of the Absolutely. individuals we interviewed tonight? <laughs> it it yeah. says it doesn't need to be a, necessarily be a member of our board, just someone well, we designate. You know, what we could, you know, what we could an interesting thing to consider would be whoever we don't recommend. Yeah. So that we then recommend the other one to be on the public infrastructure. If, assuming Bob doesn't want to do it, which I think Bob, you're overly qualified to do that with your background, and I know you've even mentioned you've been involved in that with other towns. Yeah, so, absolutely right. So you would be the ideal choice, I think. It's only a question of devoting the time to it. <clears throat> I, I hate, I hate to say it, but I probably would not be able to give it the attention it deserves. Would you be able to do it as an old? in an alternative if one of these other individuals could back you up? <clears throat> yeah, possibly. I mean, I... Possibly, yeah. I'm the guy with the time. I mean, I'm not opposed to doing it, but I... But going back to your point, I would prefer to see a member of the board on that committee rather than having some of the board appoint someone else. That, yeah, it's, it's literally an unknown except for a 20-minute conversation and, and an application. 
if you feel like you have time to do it, I think that would be great. Um, well, I think you make time. I think this is literally what, what, what's going to happen. To, it's going to be really the future of the town in terms of what they're going to be able to do in the next five years or ten years. Do it. So, I mean, I'm not opposed to giving them the time. Anybody else? If I had the time, I would do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested, but again, I'm concerned about the, the commitment. Maybe the time commitment. I mean, do you know? Does it say in the letter, like, or in the advisory board, how often? No, it doesn't. You know, it does reference numbers of meetings, or a, you know, the fact that there'll be meeting meeting intensive at least as I go. I think she was talking about it at our staff meeting today, and I, I think it's. It's advisory, um, and there's also a big piece of this that's going to depend on the, um, if I get the acronym right, it's the MSBA, the um, mm -hmm. School Building mm -hmm. Agency. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be the ones to make the final decision on whether Gates stays as a um, middle school or whether it doesn't. Well, no, they won't actually, Laura. The way that process works is you'll have to hire, and that's another good reason that maybe I, I I might not want to be associated with this because <laughs> my firm is going to be competing for the, uh, mm. for the project. Oh, okay. Um, you'll have to point. hire an architectural uh, firm to do a, do a feasibility study. Um, they'll look at Gates uh, or the middle school situation in two or three different ways. The first one's a no-brainer. What happens if you do nothing? Uh, the second would be a rehabilitation addition, whatever was required of Gates to do, you know, to make that facility part of a new new school, um, and then a third third component would be to study a brand new school on, on another site or on another part of the Gates site. So that's a requirement. MSBA is going to going to want to see all three cases laid out, uh, debated within the town, um, the town and school building committee will come to conclusion on which one they find most acceptable. But there's quite a bit of work to be done. I mean, you need um, cost estimates of all three situations uh, um, you yep. know, going forward, as well as construction, things like that. So the process is extensive, and it's also very well documented. There's no guesswork. You just march down, the, you march down that road. Yep. So MSBA will not necessarily decide, they may weigh in and they have certain, uh, what's the word, bonus points that you get, for instance, for renovation as opposed to building new. Um, and there's bonus points for other reasons too that you might get, which, which ups, your, ups your reimbursement percentage. Um, but the town and the town's building committee will ultimately make the decision about which way to go. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, maybe Bill, if you're willing to do it, and then when you can't make a meeting, one of us will back you up. I mean, if it's if it's di would... directly. Because I yeah. don't want to put you in a spot. Well, you know, frankly, it, it might because I really do think it's the kind of project that that's kind of our bread and butter um, practice. You know, go, doing stuff like this. Yeah. Um, I well, hadn't even thought of that until, until well, I just mentioned it. Bill, um, <clears throat> what do you think are the, the, the best skills for that kind of position? I mean, do you think it, someone like that has architecture background or business or, um, you know, real estate, lawyer skills? It's going to be planning. I mean, it's master yeah, I planning. Think it, I think it, it's going to be more planning, I think, than anything else. Yeah. Well, define well, what you mean by planning. It won't be physical planning, though. <laughs> it, might, it might be more strategic planning. You know, it's not going to be laying out buildings on a, on a, on a piece of lo a land, for example, that yeah. kind of planning. It's going to be more, how do you get from here to there? What are the steps? You know, how do you define the alternative? Right. The alternative possibilities. Yeah. What's feasible? What's less feasible? We need, we need to designate our person in about two weeks, you know, as, as I read the blurb. The one by the 27th. Yeah. So the 27th is your next meeting. So if, you, if they want it by the 27th. And I'm assuming they're all going to be no public, later than the public meetings as well. Is I think they a, have to be. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't prohibit, you know, if more than one person wants no. to go. Yep. Yeah, the way this is going to work is like, you know, most of the other appointments where 
you all recommend who you want, and then they make the final, you know, they finally sort of bless it. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't necessarily mean that there would be one person for each board, per se? Oh, yeah, no, there's going to be one person. She lays out, uh, maybe she laid it all out in that yeah. letter, yeah. or this lesson laid it all out. It's a group of 15. Seven are yeah. from, from specific di disciplines, and, and eight are at large. Everybody who's affected has a couple of people, and then there's some boards that seem to be important in, in the sense of the, the town overall, and the planning board was one of those. Well, I mean, I have tentative interest. How's that? With, I mean, I think I, that I Bob... I think it sounds very interesting, but... I think Bob actually has yeah. the best skills, from what I understand. That's why I was asking that yeah. question. But I completely understand where you're coming from in the sense of it could be potentially a conflict of interest and you know, whether you have the time commitment. You know, and I, I'm sort of concerned about the time commitment as far as just depending Suppose on what it is. Suppose we came back and sit there and sent him a note saying that, that I would be the representative and you'd be the alternate. That's fine I don't, with me. I don't know that they want alternates. No. <laughs> she doesn't, you know, I shouldn't say she. The selectmen don't really like alternates too much. They want one person so everybody get, gets used to working with that person. Everybody knows, you know, where that person's coming from kind of thing. Um, so they don't like mix it up with all, all these, like say 30 people potentially. That, you know, they want 15 people. They want to know who they are. But that doesn't preclude us from sending a substitute if it became necessary though. Well, the, the I don't think, would it's, be a I don't think whatever, it means a substitute. Whatever vote for that they would take, well, it would be a non-member. Well, let me, yeah. let me step back. Is that something you want to do, Bill? Well, I don't I mean, mind doing it. Well, no, not that you don't mind it. Do you want to? The, the reality is yes. Okay, then that's all. That's the most that's important fine. thing. Then yeah. I'd say if you want to, you've got the time, and if you don't mind, I think that's a, a good liaison. And you can go to as many meetings as you exactly. can fit in. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Certainly if you need to talk about MSBA or you know, stuff like that. We can have a cup of coffee sometime. Yeah. I just don't want. I know we put mm -hmm. a we put a lot on your shoulders, yeah. and I don't want I to yeah, don't uh, want overstep our uh, our boundaries because you do soak up a lot of the <laughs> soak up. <laughs> but you know, I wasn't being facetious when I made that statement earlier about about <laughs> who and what you are. Yeah, yeah but it, the reality is, is that <clears throat> right being retired, I've got enough time to do right. But we don't want to abuse that by any means. No. Besides, if I don't want to do it, I just sit there and say, well, I've got this other work to do. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> That's true. My wife, understand, my wife is beginning to understand that now. Okay. All right. Well, should okay. we dispense with this right now then and just... Well, Bill will be our liaison. Okay. Do, so do you we want to vote or we'll just... We're yeah, good. I think you should vote it. Okay. I move that Bill serve as our liaison to the, what is it called, Public Facilities Master Plan Steering Committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hopefully they make out t-shirts. Those would look good. It's <laughs> a long name. Can we still get a Starbucks inside the, the new town hall? Well, we can so now move it. <laughs> oh, within town hall. That'd be nice. Within the, the new as one. As long as it's got, you know, wireless. As long as we're okay, uh, yeah. Wi-Fi. Okay, yeah. Wi-Fi. Okay. Do we need, you want to put together a letter for them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You need this? Sure. We'll take it. So all we have left is Bob, I think, right on the... We get to discuss and vote for the selectman and the alternate member. Oh, wait. Oh, alternate member. What else uh, we have okay. to One more vote. I'm sorry. I was thinking the final motion, but we're not quite there. Right? No, we're not there yet. <laughs> and we, we need to go into the selectman's meeting with a recommendation or make a recommendation, recommendation I, prior to that? What I would think that we would do is we came back and indicate that we've interviewed the two candidates and we voted um, to recommend whichever one. Um, as as our our as the alternative member, as then, opposed to it's voting at the selectmen's meeting and simply just voting. Yeah. The selectmen. Um, I think we've got the advantage because I, I don't know when this this is going to air on cable, but I mean it's not going to air air between now and Tuesday. That's so right. Yeah, it'll be Wednesday. We're going to be the only ones that have basically seen spoke to. The candidates between now and then, unless they stuck one have either called them up or made other arrangements to talk to them. I'm not I sure that they I have. I think you're in a good position to get who you recommend if you're, you know, if you have consensus. Yeah, sure. uh, What's the pleasure of the board? Discussion? 
Sure. I'm frankly absolutely caught on, on whatever I'm caught on. I mean, those are two extremely qualified candidates. Um, you couldn't ask for, and in different ways, kind of, too. Um, just, you know, sort, sort of the, the business connection and, and general acumen and um, air, if you will, of the, of, of the first candidate. Obviously, somebody who really knows his, his way around and can get things done and is used to, used to having, um, having that happen in his life uh, f for a long life and is retired furthermore and has the time to devote, obviously, the interest second candidate connection with government again uh, a person who clearly has done a lot and gotten results you know, which is really very you know results is what what, what we're looking to have happen you know and, and uh, I, I I don't know I mean if I don't know who I who I want to vote for that's my I have a real problem yeah but you I think you're spot on they both have very strong they're very strong in certain areas. Both of primarily in the two areas that we're looking for. Yeah. Eric? I feel the same way. Um, uh, if I had to choose between, well, in a few minutes I'm going to have to, I guess. Uh, I, I would put Mr. Pritchard at the top of the list simply because he has what I think are, are unique qualifications. Um, you know, there's lots of business people around, but I don't know very many people that have had that kind of government experience at the state level that we have access to. Um, I, I, I don't want to lose Mr. Newman, though, either. I mean, he is exceptional. Uh, and that's the reason why I made the statement earlier today and saying if we need to put someone on, on the board that now you're filling, either one of those would have been an excellent choice. Um, but I, I, would, I would probably, the advantage that Mr. Newman has, though, is that Mr. Pritchard um, appears to me to be um, weighing other options and other opportunities in his life. Um, and I don't know if he's got the same amount of time that he can devote, the same amount of commitment. Um, There's mundane things that have to be done before we get to the working on the cream, which he did, that both of those guys can provide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I suppose at this point, I'm kind of like, like, uh, like Bob here. Let's toss a coin. Richard? I have one question. Is the, uh, the third candidate completely out just because they weren't able to come in this evening? Is that the situation? Well, we kind of bounced that back and forth. And my first thought was, you know, maybe we should give them a chance. What if, you know, these two don't work out? And, yeah, you know, there are a number of things in play. There's, there's a selectman's meeting that's, you know, that's hard to reschedule these things. It's, you know, you know how busy those selectman's meetings okay. are. No, I'm, j I'm really um, just asking the question. B Bill, Bill really was the decision maker mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, pretty much so. I think, I think when, when I looked at it, to be honest with you, I looked at the three applications. And I'm sitting here saying that in, in the unlikely event that the two people that were available to come in, then we could we could always fall back on the third. But it looked to me as though the two people that came in, right, were, were very very well qualified, and I think that was borne out by by the uh, you know the interview. Okay, well, so I just wanted to make sure that that was yep. that we were deciding amongst two as opposed to three. Yep. So I think that, uh, you know, I feel the same way that everyone else is two extremely qualified candidates. And I look at, you know, Monty in the sense that he does have the time, which is really important, as we've just uh, borne out with Bill um, and the fact that you're doing the lion's share of a lot of these committees and so forth because you do have the time, the luxury of having that. So that's a huge advantage. But at the same time, Stephen, his resume and his experience just kind of blew me away. It's like he's had, I mean, he... Uh, there was a you can't manage 4,000 people I mean how many people have that kind of experience so that was very impressive you just want to um, manage the 200 to come to town meeting and vote <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well and the fact that he's also an engineer you know and again that he's worked um, you know as the secretary of environmental affairs 
you know, the Big Dig Review. I mean, the, the list of government um, positions is very impressive. Yeah. Um, and I think someone like that could really add a lot of value to the, the board. So again, it's, it's tough. Um, and I would, I guess, uh, look at how the other the members of the board are, are thinking. <laughs> probably we're all in the same. We're probably pressure. all in the same situation. I feel like the pressure. How do how do we uh, uh, enlarge the board? Can we vote to uh, <laughs> have two alternates? <laughs> it's actually set by state law. That, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get one alternate. Yeah, in fact, well, we've modified that. We the way we handle our, our alternate is very unique. That, that's true. That we, we did it that way. And that, my last question to Stephen was all about the, like I said, the commitment, because I was, you know, I was yeah. looking at Monty and I was like, okay, well, he's definitely got the commitment because he's retired and then he knows he has the time to spend. And as Eric pointed out, I think, you know, he was saying, well, I've got other things in commercial real estate development. I, I kind of envisioned that he could be one that travels a lot and is doing lots of, um, you know, business deals and so forth. So again, it's potential. He's, and he's also obviously got a political career, you know, that, that's, that's been going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not... Well, I don't know about that. I mean, just, I mean, when you say, I don't think of, like, these types of things as being really political, per se. Well... I think of political as, like, you're running for Senate. Yeah, you know. uh, more, more like a, bureau, a bureaucratic career, perhaps, might be better. <laughs> so I, where do you weigh in, Dan? Well, you know, when Monty interviewed, I was very impressed. I thought, this is a guy we need on the board. He can make things happen. He's got the right frame of mind about economic development. I'm like, wow, how are we so lucky to find somebody as good as Monty? I'm like, this is a done deal. And then Stephen gets up there, and I'm, you know, blown away with, uh, with him and his resume. And, um, you know, I think he can bring a lot to the table. I do have some of the same concerns about the time commitment. I guess initially we're talking about he'd be filling – the slot until May, which is the remainder of what your term would have been, right? Until Correct. May. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they both bring different skill sets. Both would be incredibly valuable to the board, I think, and be a great addition. I, I, you know, for me, I guess, when I look at everything, I, I think that Stephen's background in state government is so overwhelmingly impressive to me, the positions he's held and the connections at, you know, the highest level at the state. Um, you talked about, you know, Secretary of what, environmental... You can't uh, buy that. The Department yeah. of Conservation. I mean, he, a lot of the things that we deal with yeah. as a board, a lot of the same issues we deal with. And, and the Mass he is a board member of the Massachusetts Energy Facilities Siting Board, Chairman yeah. of the Board of the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority, the yeah. MWRA. Yeah, I mean, it, the development background and the knowledge background, all of that, I... To me, I mean, I, I think Monty Monty would be very valuable, but I, I can't turn away from the resume. And to me, I feel like maybe it's worth the risk on the short run to see if he does, if Stephen does have the time commitment to make it happen. It's we're not, you know, you know. I guess weighing everything else, I guess I would favor Stephen. But I want to keep Monty too. Yeah. Well, and maybe there's some other way. To well, there's ask this question: Is Stephen best put here? On this board, or is he best working with the economic development group? I think Monty might be better working with the economic development group, actually, because those are the things he was talking about were more, you know, the outreach to businesses were more the types of things that selling. the, the yeah. EDC does, actually selling the town and doing that. So to me, I was wishing there was a slot open on the EDC right now, because I think I would put Monty on that one and Stephen on this mm. board. Well, and... I mean, when it comes down to it, not that I want to have a competition by any means, but, you know, next spring when the position becomes available, whoever decides will have to run. They can both run if they want to. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, not that we want to set up that, but I mean, it is up to the individual at that point. And there will be, around that time, the EDC's got two more people that will be turning over that will have to decide whether they want to get reappointed or not. So really? Also that soon? Yeah, every year there's now at least two or three people mm. every year. Um, two of them were just up. Um, Chris McConney and Jack Gallagher were just up, and they got reappointed a couple of months ago, I believe. Okay. So it's a rotating, like our board, you know, every, mm -hmm. every year there's new people coming up. So. Well, but when, when Richard was, um, back when the alternate position was, was open, you were interested in it for a while, and... I think somebody else got the well, appointment. I, yeah, I went through this exact, and it was I, almost literally 
because it just seems analogous. Yeah, well, it was almost the exact same situation because it was a very short time period. It was only six months. I went and interviewed through this board as well as the board of selectmen, and then they chose the other individual, and then that other individual had some citizenship issues. Yeah. <laughs> and so what happened is, you know, after a few months, they just said, well, you know, that person cannot be on the board, but then that was, that was opened up for then a town meeting to apply for the position or to um, not apply, but I guess register to pull papers yeah. um, to, to uh, be in the election. So, I mean, that's still, you know, this is an appointment. This appointment's only for now, what? Six months. Four months. Until May. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is that right? Well, March, I think. April. Early March. Yeah, March, April. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. usually in, yeah. okay. it's after town meetings. So, like, okay, so six months, uh, basically. So at that point then, either candidate could decide either not to or um, both of them could, like I said, pull papers if they want to. Mm -hmm. Sort of a nice kind of trial period in a way. Mm -hmm. Which is what I was saying in the paper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, and again, I wanted to reiterate about the resume. I'm very impressed. I feel like I, I'm in Monty's court too because of the, the issue with the paper. I'm really glad that he came and you know, it made an impact on him, which makes me feel good. But I, I feel like Dan is like, I can't ignore this resume because um, it it's very impressive. And I guess with that, I just, I'd be happy to have either one on the board. I just, it does make me wonder if there's an opportunity with Stephen and his connections that we might be remiss mm -hmm. if we miss at least trying that because you know, just his comments about weighing in on the grant process and everything, you know, it's a lot less about the application and a lot more about understanding, you know, the connections and what they're looking for in the point system. And he seemed to have a sort of a more intimate knowledge of that. And that could really have a huge impact potentially on the town if he is able to help us with that type of thing and make some of those connections for us at the state level. Um, it, it could turn out to be fantastic. And to have someone like that living in situate and wanting to volunteer for a local board to uh, me is i'm impressed i, almost, I, I almost, feel like saying i'm going to step down and just take yeah, my yeah, seat and <laughs> I, I almost think I, same, i'd like to thing. i'd exactly. like to bring him in and see if he'd do a, a, a grant writing seminar for yeah. us you know and say here's how to do it and, and monty for that matter as well i'd be happy yeah. to you know yep. relinquish my seat and let him get up here he has a fantastic resume and great seems to have the time commitment and motivation so it's a, a very tough decision but for me it comes down to I just can't ignore Stephen's resume it's just too impressive to me for for what we do it seems to fit exactly with what we do I would have loved to have Stephen on the alter, alternative energy committee yes because yeah. he ended up with the power yeah. background yeah. and yes. the siting yeah yes. right I mean that would have been a, I think a, a, an ideal fit mm -hmm. uh, he was it. probably still in the Caribbean at that point right um, but, but as I say, that, that didn't happen. I and mean, it would have been a perfect fit there. Right. I think the six months, five months, whatever it is, is going to, let's just say that we voted for Steve. Um, and you're right, you know, he may get involved in other things, which is, you know, he's obviously looking to get involved in some other things. And, and those, those things may not be compatible with, uh, you know, a, a commitment to, to working here uh, with the planning board, um, but we'll know that perhaps in the next five or six months, and, mm -hmm. and he'll know that. So it's a good kind of time frame to see how that situation develops. No, and that's, that's the only possible downside, it seems yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, exactly. but you have a personal relationship with Monty, don't you, Bill? You play golf well, with I, him. I play golf with him. Yeah. I mean, that's and, and so you can make sure he doesn't get too far away in case we need it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think right. that's a possible scenario that, you know, after five months, you know, there may be another opening on the board so, yeah, but for I mean, Monty or the EDC or but something. But I would suspect that Monty's right. looking to do something. He's, you know, involved in the town. I mean, I think he's already demonstrated that, he, that, he, that he's willing to do it because he mm -hmm. was the head of the, the cable committee. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I wanted to ask him, though, why there was no variety. This is the only town in the entire county that doesn't have Fios service. I'm just curious no, about that's that. Not, that's on him. That's for Verizon. Verizon's not going to put it in. It's not, in their opinion, it's not cost effective. Okay. So I, just, very I just, limited conditions that they're expanding files. They're, they're going off in the wireless world. Mm. Um, but two, one thing that concerns me is that you've, you, the person on, that, that's, that's a department head and manages things at a very high level in the state is basically being asked to um, 
as a primary function to sit in at, at, at our meetings on every twice a month, right, and be a representative and be able to vote if one of us decides that we're not able to make it, right, and for whatever reason we can't make it, you know, and that's his primary function. And I'm just sitting there saying, I mean, I'm, that's, you know, I'm taking a tremendous capability that I've got and putting it in, I think, what I would call a, a, a mundane operation for most of the things that we do. I'm not sure how, how long you'd be able to retain his interest doing that. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know either. I, well, I don't know. I mean, he said he had the, t when we asked him the question, he said, oh, he definitely will make the time and has the time. And I, but again, I don't think there's any way of knowing at this point. Potentially, it could be a primer for uh, bigger and better things, per se, where you know, you look at that for five, six months as a position, and if he's like, wow, this town government stuff is really cool, I'd really like to be more involved. Um, you know, so I think it could be a, a way to get someone in like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I really don't think we can go wrong either way. It's going to be a, a benefit to the board to have either one of them. Um, yeah, it would be ideal to have both of them involved in the town government. But the grants that we're looking for, are they, are they basically directed towards the economic development? Well, there's, there could be all types of things. I mean, there's, that's what we've been focused on, but clearly there's environmental things and transportation things and whatever initiative in the master, master plan we decide to pursue, there's state grants for all of that. Uh, one of the things that we could really use some help with, I think, is in the housing issue. And that seemed to be an area that Monty was particularly interested in. You know, he talked about that at some length. And, and those are those are areas we need some serious help with. Very difficult. We could defer to the selectmen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's no plan. No, it's really not fair where they're not set in on. Yeah. So where are we? Yeah, I'm just thinking about like some of the things you said about like whether that was well, it's like overqualified, but at the same time, I feel like again, it's a catch-22. You may be overqualified, but it's a way for someone. Who, obviously, they've expressed interest. Mm -hmm. They know what the position is at least somewhat about. But it's an alternate position. Yep. It's not a full member of a board. And he's also been around enough to know that he's not going to be surprised with with, with what he's going to wind up having to do. Which is basically really. Uh, listen and learn. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, ultimately, I feel like that's what that position is primarily, you know, is listening and learning about it and then deciding, okay, I've done this for six months. Do I want to continue? That's really what I comes mm -hmm. down to. <laughs> well, we need. I've expressed my preference. I think Eric did as well. Mm -hmm. Any, everyone else still on the fence? Or does anyone else have a preference? Well, again, I think just based, based on the resume experience alone and just that, you know, you're trying to like isolate something, I think that Stephen, uh, I, that would be my preference. Well, why don't you make a motion and see what happens? Make a motion that we vote, or no? Make a motion that we recommend. <laughs> okay. Appointment of so and so to the board of selectmen. Okay. Um, I recommend, or I uh, move that we recommend Stephen Pritchard um, as the role of alternate position on the Situate Planning Board. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Anything new to add? No. So, in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 I will vote aye and make it unanimous. Okay. I guess what what to do with Monty now? <laughs> I think well, we I, need to I, find a way to keep we, him. We need to make sure he doesn't get away. Well, yes. we need to make sure we don't lose both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody want to craft a really well-written letter? 
I think you drop a dime and you give them a call. That way there you can answer the questions. Yeah. Or you could come back up and get an advanced copy and watch this meeting. Um, would it be better for one of us to make this call rather than you? I can call. Why would it matter? Just because of know. your personal relationship with him. And, and I also play just, golf with him. you know, we're, we're not the final decision the yeah. selectmen are. So that's true, too. Well, I think we should probably maybe wait until that's that meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think and, you, you got to have recommendation going in, and I think that if Monty's going to, they're both going to be so, there at the yeah. meeting in case okay. I have any questions. So you got to know which, you know, what the recommendation is. Also, I just want to make a comment again based on my experience um, that. When I saw actually the resume of the other gentleman, and I can't remember his name now. Jeff Wilson. But he was like a town planner in Manhattan, or he was a planner of man in Manhattan or New York City or something. Oh, Tom Yardley. Yardley, yeah. yeah. So again, as a just to put myself in that situation, like when, you know, I, I wasn't hurt, I wasn't upset at all. I was like, when I looked at all his qualifications, I said, oh my gosh, he's a planner. He's in Manhattan. You know, he's from marginally, Manhattan. marginally better than I was on paper. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, I mean, it just it made total sense. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is, again, if you're looking at, um, I hate to say not the facts, but if you're looking at things. Objectively. Kinda, yeah, objectively, quantitatively, and you look at, I don't think someone's going to be upset. It's not an emotional decision that we, we were looking at here. We were purely trying to like come to a quantitative decision somehow based on information that was presented to us. Yeah. We had to so, differentiate them somehow. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's, by any means, would be any hard feelings or, so I just wanted to throw that out there, okay. that people, I think, are pretty reasonable. Yeah. Well, hopefully we still have access to yesterday's administration. <laughs> okay, having done that, we'll prepare a memo. Can you just draft up a memo and we'll, I'll, I'll look at it before we send it. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about where we're each going to be tomorrow because, um, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be good to, to get it out tomorrow yeah. if we can. Now, are we to attend the Tuesday night meeting of the Board of Selectmen as a group? Um, yes, because the way it's going to work is it'll be a roll, well, not a roll call vote, but we'll each be, able, each, each of us will vote. Okay. On Tuesday? On Tuesday. Actually, Bill, I think Karen has prepared a memo. It's you know, it doesn't go into a lot of, you know, depth. It just, in, there is a blank space, which we need to fill well, in. I'll, I'll look but at it. It's, it's just very I'll look at it after This the is your recommendation. Then. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we already voted tonight, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bob's got a motion. I would move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Uh, tough decisions, aren't they? Yeah. I really tough.